want to hear from Sandra. And every time on the air, she's getting. Sandra all the time is here with the cold heart truth. She's the ears and the eyes for me and you. Every day, everyone want to hear from Sandra. And every time on the air, she's getting better. So tell your sister, tell your brother, tell your mama, call Sandra in the morning and in the evening. They always calling, calling Sandra. And when they start fighting, they call in Sandra. And it That's right, folks. Everyone is telling their mama about the cold hard truth. Welcome to another episode with more truth telling, more problem solving, and of course, more tea spilling than ever before. Sit back, students, grab your tea and turn up the volume because class is now in session. Call in at 936 2626 because your voice matters. Share your opinion on issues that matter the most to you. Good morning, everybody, on Bobo 89.1 FM. Good morning to all of our listeners. Big news. I have some important news for you. Interesting news. It's Blake and Aaron's Spilling the Tea with Sandy. K-Man's top news headlines of the day from CMR. Morning, Sandy. How are you? Good morning, Blake and Aaron. Everyone listening to KISS 106.1 FM. Yeah. and Easy Sandy listening like- music. How are you? Easy. Easy. Yeah. Easy listening. Easy Bump listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, very interesting situation that's uh, developing off of Little Key Man. Uh, really? Apparently a disabled cargo ship is drifting yeah. out in the water. I've never even heard of such a thing before. I don't know what disabled I mean, cargo ship is. We don't have any bridges over there, we do we? Have, no. yeah. <laughs> Thankfully like, not. That's what happened in um, Too soon? So the Cayman Islands Coast Guard 
um, are assisting in a rescue coordination operation, I guess, with this disabled cargo ship, SC Montana. It's a Liberian flagged foreign vessel. And the ship has suffered engine failure and is drifting towards Little Cayman. A freight vessel has been dispatched to assist and prevent a potential grounding. And all crew on board SC Montana are safe. And the vessel Aruna is assisting to keep the Montana out to sea so it doesn't run aground. Mm. Mm. So um, the most recent update provided uh, this morning includes um, the efforts are still being made to um, secure the ship. So they continued working throughout the night to render assistance to the SC Montana and divert its course from Little Cayman. And uh, is it Left Keys, which is a bulk carrier vessel, has been assisting to tow the SC Montana to a safe location away from Little Cayman. And Navigator, a tug vessel, has also been deployed from Grand Cayman. So representatives from the Cayman Islands Coast Guard expressed ga- gratitude to their counterparts and the crew on the left kiss for their continued assistance throughout the incident, noting that neither the docks in Little Cayman nor Cayman Brack have the infrastructure to handle the uh, stricken uh, vessel. So got to we'll keep it out the- of sea and tow it somebody, somewhere else. We'll send the shipping company the bill. Yeah, yeah right. So... Okay. Um, Cayman's economy expanded by 4% in the first quarter of 2023. So this is according to um, some ESO statistics. And um, real gross domestic product in the Cayman Islands is estimated to have increased by that much in the first nine months of 2023, despite a decrease in the construction industry, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is a third quarterly economic report. Um, both building permits and project approvals decrease in both value and volume uh, by reaching its highest value and record for the same period of 2022. So uh, a lot of people probably don't have any problems with a little decrease in the construction industry. And uh, despite that, the um, stats show that there was still an overall 4% increase in the economy. Interesting. If you want more information on this, um, we'll touch on this a little bit. And the report is also available in our article. So definitely check out the website. All right. Okay. Um, Let me see here. Yes. Uh, Oh, yes. Wanted man. Remember the uh, wanted man, Mr. Elliot, who is wanted for um, offenses? Mm. Against a which young one? child. I was just going to say, which one? Oh, that one. Yeah. So yeah. apparently he turned 52-year-old uh, Cedric Ellis, who was previously circulated as being wanted, first by CMR and then by the police, has turned himself in. Yesterday, um, the police officers have confirmed that he uh, remains in custody as investigations continue. Um, Jamaican national, who's been in Cayman for quite some time, is wanted in relation to very serious sexual assault incidents. Um, occurring with an 11 year old child. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes. Right. The DJ's 5K challenge uh, registration is now open for this. Uh, it's a very large event every year. So if you're interested in um, participating, go and check out the registration details. You can um, register on the website. They actually cover all three islands, Cayman Brack, Little Cayman, and Grand Cayman, starting on the 14th of April. Mm. So it's an annual 5K walk-run event, now open, celebrating its 10th year, by the way. It brings together both uh, civil servants, public, um, sorry, private sector, and fitness community to promote physical wellness and community development. And I think every year they also choose an NPO um, that they like give proceeds and stuff too. So definitely um, check it out. They say that so far in the past nine years, they've raised $559 for various beneficiary charities throughout uh, through sponsorship and registration fees. So that's fantastic. Um, hey, do, do you have an update on uh, that uh, the post that you, you put up uh, about the shooting? Um, the police have said nothing. Mm. So um, all we can tell you is what Lamar Road is talking. Yeah. Um, which is that the streets were very, very busy uh, last night. And um, my sources indicated that a man had showed up at the hospital with um, a, some sort of a 
what looked like a gunshot wound to the head. Hmm. So he walked in? No, the ambulance took him in. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. So any, this was on the, um, the mass shooter on the, uh, the soccer field? Have nothing, we heard nothing further. Nobody has been charged as far as we know. People were arrested and then um, let out on bail. And wow. that's that's all we got, honey, Chia. Yeah, just haven't, just haven't heard any update on it. It seems like yeah. it's gone quiet. Update and, on yeah. That, or what's going on? I mean, I guess they're still working it, but uh, no, mm -hmm. no smoking gun for them to report anything like that. So hmm. we'll keep yeah. an eye on it, though. And all we right. got we got a CMR exclusive this morning in case any it? of your listeners between songs want to jump in. We're going to be talking about an allegation of bigamy. Uh, we have all the documentations. And the person overseas has said, basically, the police don't seem interested in the case. So it's quite interesting. Hmm. Married right. twice to different people. You know, you can always listen to our show show in its entirety <laughs> and then go back to Sandy's page. That's very true. And watch watch the video. Yeah. I know, but the, the, the suspense you get from the live phone calls sometimes, it's like, oh my God, she's calling the woman right now. Yeah, but then you can fast forward to parts of your show if you want to listen. <laughs> That's very true. Yep, yeah, Facebook to the board and site. YouTube. Check it out. It's always on there. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna miss Blake's jokes live. So that's that's pretty important. That's right. yeah, we, yeah. Have, we have a very <laughs> mediocre, riveting show. Uh, oh my goodness. So yeah. nobody wants to miss that. No. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye. See you. All righty. Bye bye. All right, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing, honey chill? Everybody good? Um, I got a little clock on my, I keep uh, changing. I'm trying to figure something out. Ooh, honey child, that's not the right one. I've got a clock on my screen now. I added another clock to keep myself abreast of the time. Let me show y'all how it, what it looks like. Hold on, honey child. So, um, uh oh, I'm going to grab the screen one more time. I use screen grab for a lot of different things. Hold on. Yes, I was a little bit short on that one. All right. So um, I can change it to like different shapes, like different shape clocks. And so um, like they have the circular clock, they have an analog, they have the digital. I think I'm going to keep it on the digital only because I get to see the actual um yeah, I get to see the actual um, seconds and everything. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You guys like, huh, Sandy? We don't understand. We don't know what you're talking about, honey chair. All right, I'm going to show you guys what it is. What it be, what it be. Okay, this is what it looks like. Can y'all see that? And then I can move it around different areas in the screen and stuff as well. So pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, honey chow, we got a lot to talk about this morning. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to everyone on Bobo 89.1 FM. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we had a little after show segment yesterday. Y'all know how it goes with the after show. It's not, it's adult only, not designed for anyone under the age of 18 for sure. Some of y'all might be over the age of 18 and still can't handle it. So <laughs> tune in to something else, honey chill. Um, what can we say? Except that uh, you know, we don't we don't take rudeness from people around. Yeah, mm -mm. we're going to respond. And yesterday, oh, let me make sure I can. Oh, you know what the problem is? I've got this backlight on. Hold on one second. Let me turn off. I got too much lighting behind me. Give me one second. Let me just uh, fix this lighting issue. Lighting is makes a world of difference. I tell you. Hold on now. All right, because I um, have a lot of other lights, like up ahead, over here, back there, the big overhead light, I keep that off because otherwise it kind of is too much. Too much of a good thing. Even light is not a good thing. So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Honey, chill. So Irvelyn is here. Let's do roll call. How's the Instagram folks doing? Y'all behaving yourself over there? Unstoppable Smoker says, good morning. Hello, sunshine. How you doing? 
Matt from KY says, morning, Sandy. What happened on the highway weeks ago? Which highway? Which week? Child, Matt, there's always something going on on the highways, the Cayman Islands. You would swear that we have like some of the biggest highways and it's just crazy here. I know what we do have, and that's some of the worst drivers. <laughs> I feel pretty confident in saying that now. All right, Miss Barbara G's in the house. Diamond Princess is in El Clase. Siobhan, front and center. Steven, good morning, Steven. He's also here joining us. Stephanie, how are you, darling? Everton, these are all of our international crew. Ronika, Everton says lost power could be an engine problem for that vessel. Oh, yeah. A drifting ship. It's not something you see every day in our region, but it happens. And of course, the last thing we want it to do is to like damage any coral or run aground or anything like that. So thankfully, the Coast Guard is out there um, managing the situation. Um, oh, somebody just sent me a picture. Thank you so much. I'm going to share this with y'all here in just a second. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, honey child, Miss Yuleen, good morning to you, darling. Faith and hope, so good to see you. She says, good morning, sunshine. Good morning. Miss Darlene McKenzie in the house saying good morning, everybody. Stephanie Brooks wishing everybody happy hump day. I know this week everybody's confused about what day of the week is it is. Um, Everton says a couple of tugboats and get to the area where they can drop the anchor. Well, they hopefully they'll get it sorted out early this morning. Wee wee, hello. Cayman Kind, good morning to you. Shaka Zulu says, happy hump day, auntie. And the CMR fam fam, hello, 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 hello. Lucille, Miss Lucille says, a very good morning, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Patricia Blake is here with us. We got Marshall joining us from North Carolina. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the, date, the update, KK, on the vessel is that basically it is um, receiving some assistance. Um, they have now at least two vessels that are out there trying to uh, render it some assistance, yes? Um, okay. Let me see here, honey chill. I see my web guy just sent me a picture. Looks lovely. Uh, and I'll send that to Renee for her story. There's a lot of moving parts, honey chair. There you go. Um, can you fix these images? I know y'all think that I do all things, but I really don't. I rely on other people. It's 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 uh it's one of those things in business that it's really you don't necessarily know everything. You, nobody can know everything about all aspects of a business. But the most important thing is knowing people who know what they're doing. Because you always got to outsource something. Speaking of outsourcing, oh, my God. Ooh, construction workers in Cayman, one of these days we have got to have a discussion about them. Oh, my God. They are the worst. <laughs> oh, honey. I don't even know where to begin with them. Mm -mm -mm. They are a special breed unto themselves. <sighs> well, today is not the day for them, though. Seriously. Um. So yes, I gotta get something to my web guy there that I want him to look at. Very good. I try to be self sufficient, though. Even some of the stuff that the web guy does, I'm like, you know, if you automate that. Uh, with a little bit of AI or whatever, you know, we can uh, we can help ourselves because it's good when people can, you know, if, if if they rely on knowing A, B, C, and D cumulatively to get their job done, their job is E, then uh, you want to give them the tools to be able to handle those things themselves. And so you don't need to necessarily be a graphic artist, but if you go to the graphic artist and say, hey, by the way, this is what I need. Can you automate some aspects of this so that when you're not available, I can just jump in and do it myself? Then uh, that's always a good thing. So AI is a game changer in a lot of respects, but boy, 
AI can be a very dangerous situation, honey child. Somebody just pumped the brakes. Speaking of AI, um, some company, I was reading this last night, just pumped the brakes on something that they were about to release because it's too easy now to um, basically copy people's voice, like verbatim. And you can see where that can go wrong. I mean, we've already had people, you know, they do this ransom phone call where your daughter calls you, mom, oh my God, I've been kidnapped or I'm broken down. I need this money urgently. Da, 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 da. Send it by cash app. And you're like, yeah, that was my daughter. And that's not your daughter. There's actually people from prison who are now um, doing those sorts of things. And the AI has leaps and bounds in terms of its development. And it sounds even better than before. So, you know, with that scam, the best way to handle that is to call the person who just called you, call them back and say, hey, did you just call me? And they're going to be like, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, chill. No, I didn't call you. And then you're like, oh, I almost got scammed. And there are people who fell for it and set substantial amounts of money. Um, you guys ever see uh, that guy, Andy Cohen? He, Andy was scammed. He didn't say exactly how much. Uh, money he was scammed out of, but they did a, a bank scam on him. And, you know, they use AI. They called him from the bank number. Um, and it, the timing just happened to be one that, um, you know, <sighs> he had just had an issue, another breach. And so he thought, oh, yeah, this is really the bank looking out for me. Um, so it's called an imposter scam. So um, he thought it was because he had just lost his bank, his debit card the day before. But unfortunately, it wasn't. And they got us. He didn't say how much, but he said it hurt. And he's a, he's at least a millionaire. So when he says a scammer hurt him financially, you know, it's probably um, quite a bit of money. So um, so basically they were after his bank account. And they did phone calls. They did all kind of stuff. They were able to get in, even the verification password, because they're like, okay, like we're going to send you a text and we need you to verify. Well, honey, chill. He did all of that, not even realizing what happened. So it's now an active case with the NYD cybersecurity unit. And they said that it's very easy to fall prey to these types of schemes because they're considered quite elaborate. You know, it starts off with an email and then they follow up with phone calls and all sorts of stuff. So, um, you know, you got to protect yourself from fraud. Yeah. And it's getting, as the technology gets better, it's getting more and more difficult to even know what to believe with your own ears. Um, Steven says, hey, Sandy, I sent you a photo of a guy yesterday. Let me know if you recognize him. Um, if you sent it through uh, social media, I have to check with, um, cause I hardly, I gotta be honest with you. If you need to reach me, the best way to reach me is actually not social media. Um, because I don't have as much time to get into like messages and stuff. So we have other administrators who monitor that. So I'll have to ask, um, I'll have to ask about that. Uh, let me ask now before I forget, just what's up me. If you really need to reach me, that's the best way to do it. All right. Um, yes. Uh, have you heard any more about the Butterfield bank scam fraud lately? I haven't. Um, Butterfield doesn't really, they don't really issue much of anything. Um, so I don't know. Normally it's people that come forward to say, hey, I've had an issue. Has anybody else reported it? Unfortunately, uh, Butterfield just isn't one of those banks that communicates very well, in my opinion. CNB, on the other hand, you know, they'll let you know if they're aware of a fraud. Um, speaking of that, they locked my, my debit card over the weekend because I didn't see an email. So I went to the coffee shop on, I think it was, was it Saturday morning? Yeah, Saturday morning I went to play a little bit of uh, pickleball. And when I got to the coffee shop, I realized that my card wasn't working. I'm like, oh, what's going on? There's money there. So then it occurred to me that maybe they had blocked it, but I tried looking through my emails. I didn't see anything. So I emailed them and they said, yeah, we sent an email yesterday morning at seven, whatever in the morning. I was like, oops, didn't see that. But boy, CNB is, listen, their fraud department is on top of things. 
They would rather be extra cautious and block you than take the chances. And I don't mind because they, they email you and they say, hey, have you authorized this charge? And I just didn't see the email. So once I confirmed that that charge was fine, um, they then open the card back up. But yeah, you got to be careful, honey, chill. I'm working too hard for my money. Um, what, 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 what? Oh my God, we have some good news. Good news in the house this morning. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, I love good news. Don't you love good news, honey child? All right, we still come to that good news. We'll make that announcement here. Good morning, Alejandro, Tracy, Miss Pat, Leroy in the house, strong will. Bless up, bless up. My mini me says I can't see anything. What does that mean? You can't see anything. You can't see the show. You can't see me on the screen. You can't see anything at all. Like, did you wake up and not be able to see? You got to specify just a little bit. What does that mean? Strong Wilt is asking about the dog bite lady. Um, I actually need to follow up with her. Thank you, Strong Wilt, for reminding me. I'm going to put that on my little notepad over here. Um, where is my pen? I did a whole cleanup of the desk. Y'all got to see the desk in the chair. Oh, there it is. The desk is looking good. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, the left knee feels a little crickety after pickleball, I got to tell you, but I'm going to keep moving. I am getting ready for my vacay in October. I got to be nice and limber. Oh, yeah. Vacay mode in full effect. I'm taking two vacations this uh, year. August, birthday month. So we're going to take little Miss Gigi on a trip. And then October is for parents only. Sometimes you got to arrange it, honey chill. All right. So let me make a little note. I want to follow with her. I did speak with her. I think it was last week. And I'll do a little follow-up to see what go on. Okay. Thank you, Strong Will, for reminding me. Marshall says some people deserve the after show when they want to be too bright. And yesterday was deserving. My God. Uh, I still don't know what to make of that guy. No, nobody seems to know who he is. I'm like, does he even live in Cayman or he, somebody just handed him a Cayman phone and he decided to call me? Wonk, wonk, wonk. I wouldn't recommend that, even on a good day. Um, by the way, our athletes are um, coming back. Track and field is coming back at 1025 this morning. Um, oh, hold on one second. Um, we can't be there because obviously we're going to be live on the radio. But... Let me check Gene to see if he's available to go for me. Hold on one second, honey chow. Let me just call him this morning. What's up? Mm -hmm. Early morning call from Sandy. He might still be sleeping. <sighs> I know it's a last minute request, but we just saw it late last night and I forgot to message him. A new child, he's still sleeping. All right. Um, we'll see if he can go to the airport and maybe live stream it. All right. So our, our six little athletes from track and field are coming back. Uh, Karifta. So um, I was trying to figure out, is Devante and Jaden coming back on that flight? Because they're overseas as well. They're overseas studying. So did they arrange for them to come back through Cayman? Like, I don't even quite know. Uh, somebody knows the answer to that. Please um, do let me know. And then the swimming team is coming back at 4, um, about 4.10 this afternoon. Now, I think somebody made a mistake on some social media post. And they said that the swimmers were coming back at 4 a.m. Actually, that's government that looks like they made a mistake. Oops, honey chow. Well, everybody's prone to mistakes, I suppose. Um, so I'm told, I, I was a little bit confused. I am told that um, the 4 a.m. is not correct. So I'm going with that. Because I'm like, but wait, the ministry said it was 4 a.m. So are you sure? The person's like, no, no, no. It's definitely not 4 a.m. 
So let me show y'all what we got. So we got 1025 this morning. The track and field team is coming in. Uh, so this is those young folks. Go on through, honey child. Go on through, young folks. Y'all looking good, looking good. And then we have um, the swimming team, because remember, they actually come, they were in, where were they? Bahamas. So the swimmers were in Bahamas, track and field, because Krift always splits it up, apparently. Is it because there's no facility that has both swimming and track and field, like they're ready to do it all? Um, so track and field comes in this morning and then the swimmers come in at 4.10. Like I said, it says a.m., but I'm told that's not correct, that that BA flight comes in p.m. Now, I have to wonder about the BA flight. Has this taken into account any possible delays? Because apparently there's something really weird going on with um, the BA flight not being able to go for Cuba. But, oh, that's the other direction, right? So this direction, oh, it still might impact them. Would that impact them? I don't know. So I think we need to just confirm the time in that. But I, like I said, although it says 4, 10 a.m. on this, I'm told that that's not correct. So I don't know who put this together. This is the Ministry of, what is SCH, whatever. That's, I guess, Sports, Culture, and Heritage. Oh, they haven't changed their name, right? They're still MY, Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture, and Heritage. But this government has split up culture and heritage. But they haven't changed their handle. Why don't they? Let me ask a question. I mean, this is something that I've always wondered. Um, why don't they just set it and forget it? You know what I'm saying? Why are they always um changing up like the ministries and stuff? So every single government that gets in, they reformulate the ministries and I, I think that there needs to be a permanent fixation. Yeah? Like fix it and forget it. Because it's confusing. Every four years it changes. And then like this particular change in my mind just doesn't, it isn't logical. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you have um, a ministry of culture and heritage separated? I need some ice, Miss Stacy, please. I need to add a little bit of ice to my water. It's a little bit too warm today. So um, it's weird. But anywho, um, I don't know how they got 4 a.m., but I'm definitely told it's not 4 a.m., okay? So, you know, flights a lot of times are not on time, so take it with a green assault that it's 4.10, probably like around 4.15 or so. If the flight's on time. Or you can go check check flight flight tracker. Yeah, so stop messing with the ministries. Just set, uh, certain ministries go together. Um, it's Youth, Sports, and Heritage is a new ministry name. And John John apparently is with Border Control and Culture, I believe. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying that that doesn't make any sense. But of course, he wanted culture. Only God knows why. Well, I mean, I think we know why. Because he's a promoter and I guess... You know, there's some conflict of interest that kind of looks a little bit fishy there. But um, he's the miniature culture. Um, yeah, well, some of them not qualified, none at all. I saw CNS did a whole article and, and somebody sent me the link. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, about the lack of qualifications for MPs. And I had to chuckle to myself. The brain power of our lawmakers is questionable, is the headline. <laughs> of this CNS article. Ooh, honey shot. Oh, it's a viewpoint. So it's an editorial. Oh God, I gotta go read that. Um, I'm sure that's interesting. I don't often read other publications locally because I one, one reason I just don't have time. And another reason is, you know, sometimes ideas can seep into your head from other places. And so we're cautious about that. Mm-hmm. So speaking of um, Carifta, after this guy got all salty yesterday, somebody called me um, and they said, Sandy, parents were calling me and they said, don't you let up on CIAA. They said, please tell Sandy she has the support of parents, silently, of course, and to keep on them. 
And they said, in fact, you know how embarrassing the situation is? While this guy said he was calling from Grenada and we're making them look bad. Wonk, wonk, wonk. According to him, we're making them look bad. Um, the parents said that one of the commentators, and I don't know exactly which one, I'm trying to get the clip so you guys can hear it for yourselves. One of the commentators actually said, you know, oh, look, we've got Jaden and Devante. They won gold and silver, uh, blah, blah, blah. Imagine if the Cayman contingent was actually organized. I'm, I'm not saying it verbatim because I need to hear it with my own two ears, but this was a summary that the commentator was like, oh, you know, imagine if the Cayman team were, were a bit more organized. They could have had a full team of athletes here. I'm like, how embarrassing. So while this guy's calling me in the show yesterday talking foolishness about, oh, I'm embarrassing the athletes and I'm making them feel bad. At the venue, I'm told um, that, you know, <laughs> Lord have mercy, the commentators are even like, uh, no. I was like, what? Mm -mm -mm. We're the laughing stock of the Caribbean. <sighs> mm -mm. Ah, yeah, yeah. They want to pretend like everything's just hunky dory over there in Grenada. Everything's fine with CIA. Our athletes are all happy, and I'm like, y'all leave a lot to be desired. There's no degree of accountability. How sad. Y'all gotta do better. It's so it's so sad that we can we can lower our standards so incredibly low. And as somebody said yesterday, it's not even in this instance, it's not even the Caymanians who've lowered our standards. We've allowed other people to infiltrate athletics who have lowered it for us. And that's a crying shame. We got we have got to do better in all facets of our lives. And, and in my mind, when you're dealing with youth-based organizations, the bar should be set um, very, very high, whether you're a church or an athletic association, right? Nobody should be giving you a pass just because. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Evelyn says, hair looking lovely. It's growing. Oh, thank you, my darling. So y'all know me. I've been on a hair journey. Um, I'll tell y'all what happened. A couple of years ago, I decided to stop uh, chemically um, relaxing my hair in any way, shape, or form. So for a minute, it was a bit of a hot mess. I had to basically cut it all off and kind of start over with new growth. And, you know, I hate short hair because I'm a person that doesn't do anything to my hair. Like I'm helpless, totally helpless. I'll be the first to admit it. When it comes to any hair stuff, like y'all know how to, y'all can use curling irons and straight irons, honey child. If I try to use a straight iron at my age, I'd probably burn myself. I've never been into like hair and all this kind of stuff. So unfortunately, I'm not very good with anything. That's why I like to just pull it back in one. And when it's too short, I can't pull it back in one. So it's a struggle. So you guys might remember it was like super, super short. And at one point I was just like curling it and doing like poofy curls, which they kind of look good. But in order to get that look, I have to sleep in curlers and not comfortable. Um. So anyway, big shout out to Rocio. Uh, last couple of years, we have just been treating it there is a treatment that she puts in it flat ironing it um you know occasionally and uh come on through honey chair and um just treating it color come stacy and everything so yes it is definitely um she was saying to me the other day thank you how much new growth i have so to speak and uh i need ice today I feel like I can't drink my water without ice this morning. Oh, she brought me a lot of ice. Mm -mm -mm. So yes, so it is a it is a um a challenge, but it's it's getting there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, healthy, and um, definitely growing, definitely growing. So I think that after pregnancy, my hair really took a like it just sucked all the nutrients out of my hair. Like it took a hit. Like I could see it, it was brittle and it was just not good. And so I was like, ah, let me just go natural and just cut it and try to revitalize it. Um, so I did something this morning, which I don't do a lot anymore. I actually parted it down the middle, honey chill. But yeah, no, it's not, I still color it. 
And so it is, it is kind of, yeah, man, it's, it's doing good. So uh, for me, just leave your hair alone. That's the best thing to do. Not too much color, not too much stress. Like I don't like blow dry it every day and put heat on it every day. You know, you've got these products that you can do heat protectant. Try to protect your hair. You don't know how long you're going to have it for. And so remember I told you guys as well that I have a, um, I've always had a widow's peak. And now that I've gotten older, my widow's peak has kind of disappeared. And I had one little, like two little hairs, like all the way down here. Cause my widow's peak actually used to come all the way down. The other day I decided to cut them. I know I probably shouldn't have. I'm sure they'll grow right, right back. Like right there. <laughs> Cause people would walk up to me thinking I had a mosquito on my head and hit me upside the head. And I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? They're like, oops, I thought that was a mosquito because it curls up, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to cut it off. So I took a pair of scissors to it the other day and I cut it. There you go. All right. Thank you, Irvin, for noticing. Anne says, hello, honey, Jill. Shout out to the CMR buddy, my CMR buddy, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Uh, Debbie checking in on Zeus. He's actually in his kennel this morning. Um, He got one of his little chew bones. They're not rawhide, but they look like rawhide. And Oh, God, he's obsessed. When he gets one of those, he just doesn't stop chewing all night. Uh -uh. Um, in order for us to get any sleep, I have to tell him to drop it. He knows that he knows the command, drop it now, because he likes to put stuff in his mouth that he shouldn't be putting in his mouth. So I had to teach him that command very, very quickly. So now he's like 80% listening when you tell him to drop it. And I said, drop it. Now let's go to bed. And he like looked around at it. And I said, no, no, bed. So he's like, begrudgingly, he went in the room. I locked the door because otherwise he'd be chewing in that all night and I would have gotten no sleep. All right. Um, I don't know that they're bringing it in. I don't think it said that we can't accommodate that ship. So I think they're going to try to keep it out at sea until they can, you know, tow it properly to wherever it has to go. Sonia says, feeling blah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully you'll cheer up during the show. Um... Yes, I'm aware, uh, Madam Anne. No problem. She says your monitor's reflection is showing on the on the Cayman flag. Yeah, because that's actually a screen back there. I used to have the real flag, and then I thought, oh, you know what? I want a screen because, in theory, I could like post a YouTube video back there. I could do other stuff. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I might do other things, like maybe a Cayman scene or whatever. But that static photo does reflect. Um, the only way to address it really is to probably tilt it. And I don't think it's on a tilting mount. Um, oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Okie dokie. Uh, all right, honey chow. Thank you very much for that feedback. All right. I'm going to tell you all something here shortly. Okay. So, yes, thank you. Um, what I can tell you is there's really nothing, you know, I'm not doing anything all that secretive here. I know all, I know that the politicians want, want y'all to believe that. Ooh, Sandy's running some undercover. I'm like, eh, nope. So there's probably nothing. I mean, I don't think you guys can really make it out what it is anyway. It's not that clear or anything, but. Um, I mean, I could blur out my background. Like I could give myself a blurred background. Let me show you guys something. There is a way to do it. So I could do background blur. Let's see. Blur like that. But I don't, I don't like that. First of all, it's too, it's too blurry for me. That, that almost gives me a headache. I'm trying to look at that. So, um, I suppose I could blur it, but like I said, there's really nothing going on here. I've got chat windows open. It's like, eh, whatever. Um, morning, Paul, brother Paul from Bermuda. How are you? Siobhan says, just like you, don't know anything through my life either. Not just business, just like you don't know everything. Yeah. Throughout life either. 
not just business. Yes, you always got to be willing to learn, honey chat. Uh, Everton says that they've started to remove the debris from under that bridge um, that collapsed. You know, the, the sad thing is um, they've said that it's going to take about 10 years to rebuild that bridge. I'm like, 10 years? Wow. Because these are massive projects. I know y'all think building, throwing, I, I, that's why I always chuckle when we'd have that suggestion, just build a bridge in the North Sound. It's like, oh yeah, that's so easy. Let me get my magic wand, my magic build, build, build building wand, abracadabra, poof. Two years later, there's your bridge in the sound. Those types of projects, especially when you're dealing with water, deep water and all this kind of stuff, marine environment impact. Hello. If it's 10 years in the U.S. of A, it'd be, it's going to be 20 years in Cayman to build a bridge. And by then, all the equipment, everything is antiquated. Leroy says that's a real mess and heck of a job. Emma, good morning to you. She says good morning to all the wonderful people. Yes, honey, chia. I'm Ray. Good morning. How are you? Alba says, buenos dias, Sandy. Como estas? Estoy muy bien. Gracias. KK in the house. Aliana says the AI craziness is going to cause a real serious problem that can't be reserved. Reverse. And then what tech world? Oops, you're bad. I mean, listen, it's it's getting closer to those movies that we used to watch where the artificial intelligence is taking over and it's going to be doing the most. <laughs> It has good applications. And then there's always, always, always the potential to, you know, use it for all the wrong reasons. Now, did you guys see this one that I posted? Let me try and find the actual post. I posted this one last week about the benefits of technology and AI. So apparently... There is, um, hold on one second here now, honey, let me see if I can find this one. Um, hold on, let me try to find the post. So there's some AI uh, technology that was able to find um, cancer genes. I think this one was specific to breast cancer when um, the physicians missed it. So the idea here, Give me one second. Let me just find the post. Is that you're not going to be replacing, to be clear, physicians and their knowledge and, you know, the technicians looking at something. But there are times when they are human beings and they might miss something, but the technology has the ability to pick up, because uh, apparently cancer cells, especially breast cancer cells, um, can be... Here it is. AI saves lives. So I'm going to just show you guys this story here. Give me one second here. So AI uh, found cancer in 11 women, which had been missed by human doctors. So this is pretty cool. This is where technology, this is the good side of technology. So an NHS tested AI tool successfully picked up cancer, that breast cancer in particular, and they were very tiny, that was missed by human radiologists. The breakthrough has the potential to improve survival rates and reduce healthcare workloads. The AI tool called MIA identified 11 cases of breast cancer that was missed by doctors during mammogram analysis. And these cancers were extremely small and difficult to spot with the human eye. So amazingly enough, the human eye can obviously, um, you know, miss certain things. And MIA stands for Mammography Intelligent Assessment. Okay. And so it can help radiologists in the decision whether to recall or not to recall. So um, a very, very important tool is designed to analyze standard mammograms for breast cancer screening. This is fantastic. Now, when I had my consultation recently with um, 
Health City, you know, every year you got to do your mammogram, folks. Um, the human eye, my doctor picked up on something. She saw a change and she said, mm, I want you to do an ultrasound and further analysis and speak to our uh, experts here. And thankfully, they had just had a surgeon. He's a breast cancer and reconstructive surgeon specialist. Can't recall the doctor's name now, but anyway, um, he's there at Health City. He had just come on board. So they said, Sandy, go talk to him. And I said, okay, you know, these are the experts. So I sit down with him and he starts looking at, you know, what caused her concern. And from his expert knowledge, he's the one now who has, you know, the expert knowledge. Um, he says, you know, when we're looking for cancer, they look different. Cancer cells um, look different. And I said, oh, yeah. And he said, yes. And he started to tell me how they look different. Like the edges are different. And this is what they're looking for. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, oh, wow. Who knew? And so um, the human eye obviously has limitations. So this AI tool was actually able to analyze the mammograms of over 10,000 women. Some of them were cancer-free, but it successfully flagged all of those with symptoms, as well as an extra 11 that the doctors did not identify. So let me be very clear. What the tool did was it confirmed the ones that the doctors saw with the human eye, but apparently they had missed 11. That's that's pretty, uh, that's, you know, 11. That's 11 women who are gonna be very, very thankful, no doubt, that um, this tool picked it up. And because it is so incredibly minute and small, the great thing about it is that they were early stage cancers which can be very easy to miss, in fact. So this is a tool that is going to help um, catch cancers early and help survivorship, really. So the lady that you see on your screen, she is one of the 11 people. Isn't she fortunate? Really amazing. So hopefully these AI tools can be integrated into our services here. Um, in her case, she had a six millimeter tumor. It was caught so early that she had an operation but only needed five days of radiotherapy. Breast cancer patients with tumors which are smaller than 15 millimeters when discovered have a 90% survival rate over the following five years. So she said that she was pleased that the treatment was less invasive than that of her sister and mother who had previously also battled the disease. Yeah. So, um, very, very interesting. She said that she had a relative who expressed sympathy that Barbara had the big C. And she says, she said to them, it's not a big C, it was a very little one. Sense of humor there. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this case, they're saying that, listen, this AI tool meant that Barbara's cancer, which potentially would not have been spotted until her next routine mammogram, which in the UK is like three years later, um, she had not experienced any noticeable symptoms. So the other great thing about this tool, because it works instantly, listen to this now, because it works instantly, tools like Mia also have the potential to reduce the waiting time for results from 14 days down to three days, uh, says its developer. So again, really quite interesting. Um, uh, of course, even when Mia picks up on it, you still need a human review as well. And they had two radiologists looking at each individual scan, but the hope is that one of them could one day be replaced by the tool effectively cutting the workload in half for each pair. Mm -hmm. And that's important because any physician or radiologist or anyone in the medical field who is overworked, you know, you got 10,000 plus um, mammograms that you need to review, that's a lot. And so, um, you know, your eyes get fatigued, your body get fatigued and you miss stuff even stuff that you shouldn't miss. And so cutting um, somebody's workload in half 
that theoretically should mean that you should be getting better quality work out of those individuals as well. So of the 10,889 women who participated in this trial, only 81 did not want the AI tool to review their scans. <laughs> Y'all scaredy, scaredy. AI tools, are, or they say, are generally pretty good at spotting symptoms of specific disease if they're trained on enough data to enable them to be identified. This means that feeding the program with as many different anonymized images of these symptoms as possible from a diverse range of people as possible is really, really important. Um, so I don't know why those 81 people didn't want to participate in the AI part of it. I don't know what they thought, you know, it was going to do, but imagine if a portion of them have breast cancer that could have been caught early by this machine. I guess they'll never know until later on. All right. So, um, it says here in this article that breast cancer doctors look at around 5,000 breast scans per year on average and can view 100 in a single session. And of course, that means that there's an element of fatigue. You get disruptions, people coming in and out of your office, somebody chatting in the background, lots of things going on that could uh, mean a doctor just, you know, they're human and they're going to miss it. So this is not going to be a replacement for your physicians, folks. This is going to be something that can be an augmentation to a physician's practice. So it's going to add that additional element. Um, yeah. And one of the things that said that because it didn't have access to any patient history, for example, it would flag cysts which had already been identified by previous scans and designated as harmless, but better safe than sorry. Um, so we'll see where this goes. Uh, very, very interesting this trial in the UK so far. And um, I definitely see, see the potential for this to be a game changer in the medical profession. I shall keep y'all up to date because y'all know in a former life, I must, I must have been a doctor or a research assistant. <laughs> That's what, I told my husband that last night. He was like, what are you watching over there? I was on the computer watching a dermatological procedure. And he's like, ew. Sandy, why are you watching that? I'm like, honey, it's fascinating. He's like, no, it's not. It's gross. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Dr. Pop, Pop, Pops it is his name. Um, he helps people with like severe acne and stuff like that. And boy, there was one last night I was watching. I was like, oh, honey, child, that's so interesting. What is that cyst called? Pilar cyst? I'm all, I'm all up into it. I'm like there with my magnifying glass going, ew, but okay. I understand, you know, listen, um, dermatologists don't knock what they do because they help a lot of people, um, quite frankly, who struggle with low self-esteem because they've got acne, back acne, underarm pit acne, acne everywhere. And so I think it's great that, you know, um, thank God I've never really had any serious skin problems, but, you know, I've seen people that do and that struggle with it. And I know, especially when it's on your face, it can be something that really, you know, makes you feel not good when you look in the mirror and stuff like that. So he had put this guy in a course of treatment. He talks about the treatment and then he has to do physical extractions. And I'm sitting there watching the physical extractions. And my husband's like, why? I said, you know, in a previous life, I think I might've been a doctor. Mm -hmm. Anywho, let's keep it moving. Um, the K cases, Butterfield's a real mess. They need to close. <laughs> they have a lot of customers. I don't know how many. But I'm with you. Uh, she says CNB is the best. Leroy seconds that. I'm with you that CNB really offers, um, you know, nobody's perfect, to be clear, but CNB has their th stuff together. Aliano says he's going to give a Butterfield two out of 10 in service, while all banks is full of ish. Well, um, KK says, I love me, Cayman National. Let me tell you all something about Cayman National. I saw somebody complaining last week about, um, I think it was FCIB, is that what they're called now? Or CIBC, or I can't remember. They keep changing up their name. But them saying that they go in there at lunchtime and there was like two tellers working. The line was like practically going out the door. And so somebody said, well, why don't you take your lunchtime? Because it's like that 12 to one hour. They're like, why don't you take your lunchtime some other time? Because, you know, the bank people have to take lunch too. And I'm sitting there thinking, y'all need to get it together as banks, because let me tell you something, 
know your customer. So your customers uh, probably have a very fixed period for lunch, right? If you have floats and people who are cross-trained in a bank, you can allow tellers who might've been there from, I don't know what time they get in. The bank opens what time? Nine o'clock. So maybe they get there from 8.30. You know, you can allow them lunch break, but you got to have other people that can come out and relieve them. And not everybody in the bank can take lunch from 12 to 1. Duh. I mean, come on now. But to think that you tell customers, no, you adjust your attitude and not the other way around. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, Y'all banks need to do better. Now, CNB, um, I went to, speaking of banks, I went to West Bay branch yesterday and I was trying to remember because they moved from the corner over, but I think they just expanded because that corner bit is still like their offices and stuff. And I was trying to remember when they first opened, because, you know, I used to have my business in that building. I was in that bank all the time. I'm like, were they bigger on the inside? Somebody said to me, no, they were actually smaller. Like the customer part um, is now smaller than it used to be. Or was it smaller before? Smaller, no, it's not bigger, but it's still not big enough. The line is like always busy in that little branch. People love branches. Thank you, CNB, for being the only bank in the Cayman Islands that is really fully committed to giving us branches in the outer districts. West Bay got you covered. We got one um, East End. You know, everybody else is pretty much, oh, there is an FCIB, I think, in, in, at um, Health City. But everybody else is like Central Georgetown, West Bay Road, and that's it. I'm like, why? Do you know that people work and they have businesses out in the Eastern Districts? And if they don't have to, or Outer Districts, if they don't have to come into town, you know, save them a trip a couple days a week. Um, I love that online banking is like a thing. You can order your drafts online. You can do transfers online. And CNB, please don't change this because Butterfield is out there hemorrhaging. Um, somebody said, even in Cayman Brack, there's only CNB. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, I mean, Butterfield trying to hemorrhage y'all with all these little fees or nickeling and diming you. Uh, even transactions between your own account. You have an account and you transfer money over. They're charging you for it. I'm like, what? That's a little bit much. And CNB hasn't done it. CNB, please don't do so. It's ridiculous. Really. Um. Anyway, Faith says, I love CNB. They called my employer when they could not get me some years back at night. CNB is, has the best protection. Love it. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> listen to Leroy. Um, so Aliano, Paul says Aliano Bank of Bermuda, Butterfields Bermuda gets five out of 10 for service. Ugh, that's not very good. I mean, I'm going to give CNB honestly, because nobody's perfect. I would give them a nine out of 10. They, they go out of your, they go out of your way. Um, I mean, even last a couple of weeks ago, I had an issue where I needed a payment reverse on a card. And I was like, oh, man, because I'm trying to break up these points by using my card. So then, you know, I'll send the, I'll put the money in the card and I had to pay some fees, honey, jail. And so when I transferred the money over, I didn't know that that organization no longer takes credit cards. They're like, oh, you have to do it online. You can't go pay cash. I'm like, what? Or give them a check, I guess, a draft. You know why? Because they don't want to pay the card fees anymore. Because they're like, the credit card fees are too expensive. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. These schools I hear came on prep and CIS, and I guess probably everybody else is going to soon follow, no longer accept credit cards for school fees. So I went and put the money in the card to then try to earn the points. Realized it afterwards. I was like, what? Well, I, I need that money back. So they had to do a reversal. Sandra, good morning. Hello, good morning, honey. Miss Sandra. Yes, honey. Miss Sandra. Yes, ma'am. I should go to the lady for the money. When I turn up, the oh, lady was there. Lord Jesus. And then I went there this morning, and the lady come out with the money in her hand, and I asked her to count the money. Mm -hmm. And let me see. And the lady put the money on the ground. Did you pick it up? No, I leave it there. She Why? had a man, her daughter. Our daughter, our sister Honey, is here, and listen, another man is here. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Linda. Linda. I need you to listen <laughs> very, very carefully to me. Now. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Men, men I'm know. Dying. Men know. But if you listen yeah. to the program, mm -hmm. what I need you to yeah. pay attention, we say, Linda. Listen, Linda. Okay? It's just yes. a, it's just a yes. thing. Mm -hmm. I need you to stop making a mountain out of a molehill. 
You need to listen to me very, very carefully now. Okay. You wanted your money back, and uh-huh. the woman is giving you your money. Obviously, I there's know. hello. Linda? Yeah, I'm listening. All I'm right. Listening. You, I'm can't, listening. you can't be listening and talking at the same time. So I know you're not really oh, okay. listening. All right. Okay. Okay. Here's a, here's the deal now. Mm-hmm. You cannot, the two of you have bad blood. Okay. The woman has made it very obvious. She don't really want nothing more to do with you. And you mm-hmm. have got to limit your contact with her. So this mm-hmm. is what you needed to do. I need you to mm-hmm. use your head in this situation mm-hmm. to get your money back and stop playing around with this woman. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. When she put the money on the ground, you yes. needed to turn on your camera and start recording. Mm-hmm. You count the money yourself. Don't mm-hmm. tell the woman that she must count the money because the woman is not going to do it. Mm-hmm. You turn on your camera. That's going to be your evidence. You count mm-hmm. the money so she can't say that she gave you a thousand is only 500. You count it with a mm-hmm. the camera there, 100, mm-hmm. 200, 25, whatever. And then you have mm-hmm. the recording. And you pick up your mm-hmm. money and you go on about your business. Why would you mm-hmm. walk away and leave money on the ground? Uh, <laughs> so um, let me have you know. Linda, when I can't, I need you to yes. listen because what I'm you listening. did don't make no sense. You need to go back and get your money. Mm-hmm. And when I count the money and it is not um, what I do now. Tell well, me. I'm assuming that she's not giving you any kind of breakdown and what has been taken out but you don't know that what if she's giving you 99 percent of your money back you're not going to know that until you count the money right Mm -hmm. yes yes so by you walking away and literally leaving money on the ground all Mm -hmm. you're doing is prolonging this situation for god knows what reason count the Mm -hmm. money because that might be the end of the saga you're not going to know that until you count the money okay go back and get your money and I am gonna get her in in some because I I I I I, I didn't um video it on the ground but I had her on tape. Listen, to I me. have I had her Go on tape, but back I never and count yes. your money. So, okay. so, sometimes we have to work towards a solution for these types of problems because that could be yes. the end of it. The woman is probably so sick and tired of you calling and messaging her. She's just giving you the whole thing and that's it. Okay. You won't know that okay. until you count the money. Then, okay. if you mm-hmm. find a problem from there, we go to the next step. But there may be no oh. next step. Okay. All right, okay. Linda. Diane. Okay. Thank you. Thank All right, you, my dear you, child. You. Honey child. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank okay, you. good, good. Uh-huh. Yes, we're problem solvers around here, honey child. Lord have mercy. Ms. Pat says, silent support is no longer sufficient. Let our voice and actions be shown, Caymanians. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Good morning, Miss Sonia. Um, listen, sometimes y'all be looking for trouble. Sometimes you just you just gotta find a resolution. Leroy says, take that money like a thief. Don't draw out situations. Like sometimes I think we just as human beings just love an extra dose of drama for no good reason. Mm-mm-mm. Look at my pretty ice. This is a nice soft ice that you can just chew on. So nice. Powdery. So say her name, not Linda Diane. <laughs> I'm like, Linda, you've not been paying attention. Lord have mercy. All right. Mm-hmm. Everton says, pick up the money and keep on moving. Ingrid says, yes, CNB is the best. Um, yes, the only recommendation I would make is to um, please uh, see if you can expand that West Bay branch a little bit. Y'all need it. Uh, 345 Tires says, and those tellers at Butterfield, they make so many mistakes. They probably overworked, honey chow. Butterfield working them hard. Uh, Leroy says, B.O.B. needs some Pepto-Bismol cleanout. Oh, my God. What a hot mess. Um, Hello, Perla. Siobhan, misrepresentation says Shaka Zulu. Do you guys need some water? Ah, it's been raining a few days. We actually had a little bit of rain yesterday during the show. It didn't last all day, but we got a little bit. Everton's like, oh no, not Dr. Pimple Popper. 
Rough seas, all the doctors around the world are having their eureka moment. They're like, look, now we don't have to look as hard and we can charge twice as much because we can find more cancer now. Um, but that's going to be saving lives. So what? Finding more cancers is a good thing because you're fighting early stage cancers? <laughs> I'm not sure that I see how this is a win-win for everybody. I don't know. Um, Shaka Zulu says, what about those announcements that AI has been used to weed out fraudulent research papers that have been published in reputable journals? A recent study showed that up to 10,000 papers have been recalled due to fraudulent findings and misret. Oh, my God, honey, chow. Like I said, um, once you put in the right perimeters for AI, you would be uh, very, very surprised at what they can find. And yes, I mean, peer-reviewed, that's why peer-reviewed papers are the gold standard in these medical journals because you always need a second, third, fourth, 300 pairs of eyes on these papers uh, because people can falsify and try to make up stuff. That's exactly what happened, why some of y'all are so confused about um, vaccines and stuff like that because the guy who originally claimed that there was a link between um, autism and vaccines, he lied in his research. The dude made it up. It's like, how could you do such a thing? It's horrible to think that any physician would do that, but not all physicians are honest people. Some of them are, are you know. Ugh. Mm -mm -mm. So he's actually been disbarred. But this all started out from, I'm trying to remember what his name is. It all started out um, some 20 years ago when this guy uh, published this infamous, now infamous article. And um, I, I, like I said, I can't believe that any physician uh, researcher would actually do something like that. It was um, Fraudulent Science published in February the 28th of 2019. Uh, February 20, 2018, sorry, marks the 20th anniversary and of an infamous article published by prestigious medical journal, The Lancet, in which Andrew Wakefield, a former British doctor, falsely linked the MMMR, that's measles, mumps, and rubella, vaccine to autism. The paper was eventually retracted by the co-authors and the journal. Wakefield was delicensed by medical authorities for his deceit and callous disregard for children in his care. But, you know, a lie is so hard. People will believe a lie over the truth any day of the week. Once a lie is out there in public, it is repeated over and over again. It grows legs. It grows tentacles. And so it, it is, there's something inherently different um, about human beings and your inability to tell, to spot a lie even when you know something is a lie, you still perpetrate it. There's a quote about this, um, about how far a lie travels. Uh, let me see. Can't remember. Versus the truth. Um, a lie can travel or halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes, <laughs> literally. And so this is one of those things. And then you have people like, you know, President Trump, who loves a conspiracy theory, uh, pumping out this whole thing, not telling you the facts of how this guy was actually Andrew Wakefield. Um, he was basically, you know, he he can't even practice medicine anymore. So you gotta you gotta do your research on this kind of stuff, folks. This was a very very unfortunate situation um, because he's caused a lot of harm, and there's a lot of people who would rather inject their children with like um, what's it called inject their children with all sorts of dangerous things as opposed to giving them a vaccine. I, I've always found it so interesting, right? That people who claim that they're afraid of a vaccine, oh, this is going to damage my kid. Well, go and give your child hydrogen peroxide injections, inject them with bleach and all kinds of foolishness. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? 
And there were groups being created on social media. Facebook had to shut some of them down where they were telling, giving people this, these concoctions um, online about, oh, this is how, instead of getting your child vaccinated against measles and all these kind of stuff, this is what you do instead. And so it, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why there has been, it's been very, very difficult, even with the COVID vaccine for some people to, because they were ready like, oh yeah, well, remember the, the MMR, you know, oh, it's killing our kids, it's giving them autism. It's like, that is so not true. That people hold on to lie, give them the truth and they don't want to hear the truth. They're like, nope, we're going to believe the lie. Sydney says, um, in relation to CIAA, it looks like they had more association members than athletes. Child, I think some of those CIAA people are there just for the trips that they get. Good morning, Miss Elaine. All right. Let's move on. Um, it's so funny, Strong Wit was asking, did the caller that called last week about her money, did she get it? She just called back. She left the money on the ground. Y'all don't value money, clearly. I ain't leaving no money in the ground. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Let's look at a case this morning that requires Sandy's investigative skills. Of uh, big, bigamy is the accusation. Oh, honey, child, this one's going to be a hot situation. Our Filipino community. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, here's the allegation. Um, that this lady, she's a Filipina. Married to a man in the Philippines. Okay. Um, his wife is working in the Cayman Islands. They were married, but he found out that his wife got married to another guy in May of 2023 in the Cayman Islands, even though they're still married. She's left him depressed. And she was saying to him that they did it to dodge each other's mandatory rollover and visa approval purposes. Quonk, quonk, quonk. This is how you end up on CMR, honey chow. You can't be breaking the law like that. We're not going to let you get away with this sort of thing. Oh, no. Um, in fact, committing bigamy knowingly... <laughs> is an offense, a criminal offense, that you can be prosecuted for. And in fact, over the years, we've seen a number of cases uh, that have come before the courts. I must say, most of them have actually been Jamaican nationals. We had the one Honduran lady that was prosecuted. That's the last one that I can think of about 2019. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but it does happen. So apparently now this husband in the Philippines is depressed. Uh, the person says, I know that this is an offense in Cayman law and it's basically a fraud. I'm going to send you proof and documentation that they're still married and divorce does, as divorce does not exist in the Philippines. Oh, please kindly protect my identity. Thank you. And we're hoping that you could help us as we reported it to the Cayman Islands Authority from multiple occasions via email, but got no response. Hmm. All right. So let us have a look on this situation now. Okay, honey chow. Ready? Exhibit number one. Hmm. What a hot mess. Here we go, honey chow. All right. It's illegal to divorce in the Philippines? How do you ever leave somebody? What a hot mess. Remind me not to get married in the Philippines. 
All right. Exhibit number one, Philippine Statistics, Statistics Authority. Okay. I mean, I'm going to read to you what this says. I know some of these are a little bit hard to read. It says, uh, this is dated September the 18th of 2023. Keep in mind now that the wedding in the Cayman Islands took place in, let me confirm the date, May of 2023. Mm -hmm. We got pictures, so hang tight. To whom it may concern, we got the Philippine Statistics Authority, CRS Form Number 5, Advisory on Marriages. Be advised that the search for the name, I'm not going to tell you all the name yet because we're going to actually give her a call. We're hoping that um, she can explain this to us. Maybe she has some kind of logical explanation. Alleged to have been on April the 28th, 1988, in this Kuzan City, Metro Manila, second district. Uh, yielded one match in our national indices, indexes, sorry, of marriage. They have the date of the marriage, January 10th, 2011. Place of marriage and name of the bride and groom. Mm-hmm. Student detectives, y'all ready? All right. Uh, certifications based on the records. Um, of 1945 to 2023 marriages enrolled in the database as of September 18, 2023. Okay. Very good. So we have this document. Then we have the certificate of marriage register in the Cayman Islands that says here that uh, this marriage took place between these persons, Grand Cayman, name the persons, marital status for the groom, never married, marital status for the bride, never married. Huh. Well, now, well, 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 now, I see. They both from the Philippines. District of residency at the time of marriage. So they're both living West Bay, Cayman Islands. Parents' names, mother's name, father's name. Marriage was celebrated between those individuals in the presence of, they got their witnesses there. Date of marriage, May the 2nd of 2023. Place and district of marriage, Chestnut, Chestnut Center in Georgetown because they went to Miss Joy and got married at her facility. All right, honey chow. So this is all very, very interesting. Now, they have not hidden, um, what is Miss Joy's wedding place called again? Um, Simply Weddings. So they've not hidden, hidden their um, wedding. Uh, you know, they've even posted on social media and each other's profile. That I'm male, oh, look at my beautiful wife. I'm like, oh, honey chow, what the heck? Really? Miss Joy always posts the most amazing photos of her brides and grooms on their lovely day. So if we go back a minute, um, she does them. Let me see if I can find. <clears throat> she does them by, <clears throat> let's see how far back we can go. So if we go back to May. This is July. Uh, let me see here now. So yeah, everybody gets a little photo. Y'all be excited to be sharing your photo. Just married sign from the cake in front of your witnesses. All that good stuff. Y'all be looking at each other like you're so happy. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is obviously the husband in the Philippines might have internet access or somebody tipped him off and say, look, yes, honey, why is your wife marrying somebody else? Hmm. So there's actually a wedding photo. I think this is them. Is this them? Hold on one second. There's actually wedding photos of them. 
Um, no, I don't think. Let me let me try. To, I don't. I don't want to get the wrong Filipina. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Uh, you know, people look different with makeup. So she's wearing. Okay, let me just confirm what she's wearing. Oh no, 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 different one, different one. Oops. Sorry, they'd be like, Sandy, you're insulting us. Are you trying to say we all look alike? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Give me a second here. I'm going to find the other picture. So, um, oh, some of these couples are really cute. But some of y'all clearly don't need to be getting married because you're already married. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one had a whole continuum of people. They're like, yes, they finally tied the knot. Thank you, Jesus. Um, oh, I like when older people have found love. That's so sweet. Love it. Everybody deserves a little happiness. Except if you're married to somebody else now, you can't be marrying somebody else. That's against the law. So let me try and find this one. Hold on. Let me try and find the picture. Anyway, um, we have a copy of it that they sent us. I was trying to see if there's any more uploaded <laughs> online. So yes, uh, so they got married to each other. They've been in a relationship here all over each other's social media pages. And the allegation is she ain't, you know, she's married to somebody else. Shall we give her a call this morning? Cause I like people to explain Wagwan. What, what's, what's this all about? Can you help us understand why? Um, you're getting married and you've not gotten a divorce and you're leaving a poor depressed husband all the way in the Philippines going, wait a minute. And basically she told him it's to be able to not get rolled over. It's a business transaction. <laughs> well, that friends is also against the law. Okay. Let me see now if we can give her a call. Every Filipina and K-man right now is not going to answer the phone. <laughs> Y'all answer the phone. They're like, no. Miss Sandy, not one of our people. Mm -hmm. All right, just a second. Let's give her a call. See what's going on. Uh huh. Hmm. Number you dialed is temporarily out of service. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you have reached this recording in error, please try your call mm -hmm. again. Thank you. From Flow. Okay, so that number is out of service. Um, interesting. All right, so my Filipina folks, I need y'all to help me find somebody now. Y'all, y'all know how this works. I know y'all can help me. All right, let me show you her photo. Okay, here we go. Wedding photo. Evidence number, exhibit number three. Here's the happy couple married in the Cayman Islands. All right. They posted pictures. See them here on social media. Here's the happy bride taking some pictures. Say, look at me. Look at me. I'm so pretty. Help us find Anne. Takata this morning. We would like to speak to Anne. Where's my Filipino folks? I know y'all listening. Anybody have a working number for Anne? Because that one, that one ain't working. We need to find out um, how she's married to two different people at the same time. Let me try the number again. Make sure I didn't misdial. Try it one more time. Number you dialed is temporarily out of service. Nope. Temporarily out of service. Okay. Um. So, you know, she's been hanging out at Lover's Wall with the husband. Uh, living her best life. Yes, here they are. Um, let me see now. There we go. Yes, lover's wall. And uh, you got some explaining to do, honey jail. So we're trying to figure this out, this, this one out. All right, I got another number to call. Hold on. 
Mm -hmm. mm -mm. What a hot mess. Okay, let's give give her a call. Yep. Oh, hi, Chell. Who's this one? Alejandro. Alejandra, is that you? Do you know where she is? Hello? Do you know how to reach her? Good morning, Simon. Morning. What do you say? He, she married another Filipino guy here and came on? Yes. What? <laughs> that, that's, that's new to me. I mean, boy, you know, I know that they stick together, you know, but... When they come came on, they almost like they just changed their orientation. And uh, I don't understand that 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 went pretty strange. It almost like as if it was like some conflict, you know, maybe like a hey, bop, best friend thing. Um, why? Because you think she'd marry somebody else? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Johan. I mean, Johan says, was, "How is this a Caymanian problem?" Mar Poor Johan. Marriage Mar 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 to me is like a, one of the taboos of the world that I didn't understand because I mean you go anywhere else in the world and you marry multiple people polygamy is a, a thing and and I'd be like you know boy it makes sense to get married I mean animals don't get married right well so well, well yeah uh, uh, okay. all right well there's some animals that yeah, do they, stay together they, forever and there's some that don't but that doesn't have anything to do right. with this situation let's be very very clear because you can be out there having relations with someone that's your business, but what you can't do right, but in this marriage, country is you can't marriage, marry more than one person when you're ready to marry somebody else. Yeah, so how how did that get passed? It almost seems familiar to the marriage and convenience as well, because, I mean... If well, you, obviously, if you, she lied you, to the uh, marriage register and to the Cayman's government about never being married. It says so on the certificate. It says that she's never been married before. It says right there, like never married. Too. That's what she claims. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yet see, we have a marriage where, certificate confirmation of a marriage in the Philippines. Imagine. So so that, that shows you the, the trust that we got in the people that that supposed to be carrying out responsibilities and rechecking. Well, and how, that no, no, no. Are, let's, are right. let's be very clear, though. <laughs> That's not really what the marriage officer does. It's not Ms. Joy's job to but, confirm but, if somebody's married already. So, so if I was to say, okay, me Alejandro going to go and marry some some woman, and I already married elsewhere in the United States, say for example, I'm married in the United States, mm -hmm. and I come back, him, and I won't go and marry, and mm -hmm. because I never told them that I, you know, like, does that make it right? That does not make it right. It's against the law. But what I'm saying, it's not exactly. her. It's so, not her so job. It's not her job to verify whether you've been married before or not. You 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 yeah, take an so oath. You take an oath and you swear on documents okay. that what you're saying is the truth. Yeah, and like I and like I tell in a border too, and you can sign a contract, but a contract can always be breached, right? All right, yeah, Alejandro. You can breach a contract we're we're gonna yes, we we, we, we I understand. understand how people I don't people, how people people lie every single day. Okay. I know, but people how lie people every single day. Lie, yeah. like, All right, we're, we're gonna stranger. give we're gonna give her a call. Just keep listening. It might make sense, maybe. Oh my God, no sir. Uh, Johanna saying this is not a Caymanian problem. We in the Cayman, how? Why is this on CMR? Well, first of all, Johan, we cover the gamut. This is not just a Caymanian only show. Cayman is an international community, and we have tentacles and connections all over the world. But I'm surprised that Johan doesn't think that people breaking laws in our jurisdiction. Marriages of convenience to be able to stay here unlawfully, illegally, um, breaking the laws of our country isn't a Caymanian problem. How is that not a Caymanian problem? You've been smoking while well, Alejandro serving a while. Or he giving, he giving you special brownies. That's why you're not eating the brownies for me no more. Because he's obviously put something in the brownies that got your mind all confused. Any breach of laws in our country is our problem. Everything has a trickle-down effect. So, yes, I, I'm surprised that I have to even explain this to you this morning, Johan. Anywho, let's see if we can get her on the phone. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Can I speak to Anne, please? 
Unfortunately, Anne is no longer working here. She's no longer working there? Yes. Oh, do you know where she works now? I think um, Harbor House. Okay, we'll try there. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye. All right, Harbor House Marina. Oh, the call's a bit scratchy this morning. All right, let's try Harbor House, honey chill. <clears throat> ay, ay, ay. Thank you for calling Harbor House Marina, mm -hmm. Hayman's number one choice for all things marine. Mm -hmm. Please listen carefully to the following options. Mm -hmm. Please press one for boat sales, two for engine parts and accessories, three for general chandlery, four for service, five for upholstery, six for accounts, or seven for general manager. What is it? What does it say? One for what? I, I, okay. Let me just press. Was it one for, I can't Your remember. Your call is being transferred. Right, Please let's hold. Just, let's just try one. <clears throat> Hello, Boat Sales. This is Al. Hey, Al. Can I speak to Ann, please? Ann Takata? Uh, unfortunately, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't transfer you because it's come through to my mobile. Oh, so have to call back and hit number three. Hit three. You're, yeah, this is Boat Sales Department. Okay, and thank you so much. Mobile. So you'll have to call back and hit number, hit number three, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning, thanks. Good All right. Oh, he's so pleasant. Oh, what did he say? His name was Al? Al has a pleasant phone voice. Number three is what we need to hit for her. Okay, let's try it again. Thank you for calling Harbor House Marina. Your call is being transferred. Please hold. Hi, boss, Marina. Good morning. How can I help? Hi, good morning. Can I speak to Anne, please? Oh, one minute. Thank you. Uh... Afternoon. Oh, sorry. Good morning. Harbor House. How may I help? Hi, good morning, Anne. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's Sandy Hill. How are you? Oh, hi. I'm good. How are you? Yes, not too bad. So listen, uh -huh. um, we're calling you from the cold hard truth this morning because oh. someone has said um, that you have a husband in the Philippines and a husband in the Cayman Islands. Oh, what yes, I know. I was quite shocked too. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, so they say that you're married to, um, uh, let me see what the husband's name is now. Um, uh, is it Jebert Hebert in the Philippines? Yeah, that's, that's the father of my daughter. Yeah. Uh huh. But is he actually your husband? Because there's a marriage certificate saying that you guys got married on January the 10th of 2011. Oh. Mm -hmm. really? No, but that that is already sorted out. It's already sorted out. How how did you sort it yeah. out? In the Philippines. How did you sort it out? I'm curious. Yeah, because I I've already um talked to my legal advisors and they've already the they've already um sorted out. Yeah, but how 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 is it sorted out? Yeah, because I know that that is not um that is not registered. It's not registered. When when did they sort yeah, that? Both when? of us, me uh -huh. me and my hus me and my ex husband mm -hmm. Deborah, mm -hmm. we know that it's not. It's not registered, so we both moved on to our lives. Mm -hmm. When you say when you say it's not life. it's not registered, so that means that when you got married in May uh, of last year, you were legally uh -huh. not married to um, Je Jebert Hebert. Yes. So yeah, that that you were no longer yeah. married to him. Yes. Oh, because we have a document here, which is like a marriage registry. Okay. That actually shows um, the search was done September the 18th of 2023. And it says that um, you were still married in the Philippines. Really? Yes. Who, who, who did that? 
Um, can can I um can I respectfully know who did that and who? Well, who I mean, I don't beyond this. Yeah, I mean that it's a public registry, so I guess anybody can request the search. Um, yes, I'm happy to send you the documents if you'd like to see them for yourself, but I'm looking at them here. And this one is definitely a search. Um, it says to whom it may be concerned, please be advised that um, a search in the name of Rose Ann Guaradillo Taka alleged okay. to have been married. Uh, one moment, one uh -huh. moment, because I am at work. One moment, because I am at work right now. Uh -huh. um, can I call you? Yes. Can I call you back? Or yeah, when when would you like to call back? Um, because I am at work right now. Um, maybe oh. on my break. Okay. Do you get a morning break before ten thirty? No. No. Oh. All right. Well, um, we we were trying to get this sorted out on the show this morning because we we're trying to get to the bottom of of this mystery. It's it's very it's very peculiar that um you think that it was sorted out. Um, I mean, we're told that there's no way to even get a divorce in the Philippines. So I don't know how it would have been sorted out with your legal counsel. Um, but yes, you can you can call me. You want my number? Yes, because I am at work right now. All right. 324-1612 or 936-2626. What's the number again? 324-1612. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you, my dear. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Hmm. That story seems like a slippery slope. So she says that her her lawyer or legal counsel or somebody sorted this out, but it wasn't sorted out before you got married is the problem. So even if you claim that now it's been sorted out, mm, I'm suspicious because we have a search here dated the 18th of September, 2023, that shows that May, June, July, August, September, more than four months after you got married, it shows that you were still married to somebody else. Um, so somebody says that there is no divorce in the Philippines, but there's an annulment. So I think your question to her should be, are you annulled? But if there's an annulment, you can't produce this search document that says that the marriage um, is still registered, right? Mm -hmm. Office of the Civil Registrar General. How how could that be? Mm. It's very strange. Um. So I don't know. It uh, it looks fishy. Date of the marriage January the tenth, twenty eleven. So at least we can confirm from her that she was married to this guy in the Philippines at some point. This person says she's lying. Deport. Uh, leave that woman alone. She needs two husbands to maintain the children. What a hot mess. Mm -mm. Got married and everything to husband number two. Ah, oh, boy. So, yeah, I mean, listen, people do move on and you move to a new country, you you know, distance does not make the heart grow fonder. I don't care what anybody tells you. Um, distance breaks up marriages all the time. This happens. People are human. They need a little loving, a little squeezing here, there and everywhere. So that's fair enough. Um, but you got to do your part in terms of the divorce. Nine, three. What's the phone number? 936-2626. Gabby is like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Strong Wilt says immigration should go and pick her up. Leroy says she's doing a P. Diddy and Sandy. Lord have mercy. She don't even know. I don't believe that. She knows. She has to know. Siobhan says that's not going to last long. Surprised that she didn't hang up yet. Well, Miss Wallace could never call me at work. Who the heck is Miss Wallace? Knew that she had children, says Leroy. Wait, ex-husband, but yet he depressed, huh? Sounds fishy. You see, it looks like she never told the ex-husband that she had moved on. 
And that, that, that is inherently a problem. So Sandy, why did she sign? Why did she sign never married? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't take a sleuth, a real sleuth to figure out that th this is, this is a bunch of foolishness. So we have representations being made to the marriage officer here in the Cayman Islands that she was never married. Mm, you see how, you see what happens when you lie? It's kind of hard to get yourself out of these situations because one lie leads to another lie and leads to another lie. Debbie says, maybe somebody's jealous. Well, I'm sure your husband would be jealous if you go marry somebody else. Shouldn't he have the right to be? <laughs> He's like, honey, child, I sent her to the Cayman Islands so she could work and bring home money to the family and look at her. She going to marry somebody else. What a hot mess. Mm -mm. Busted, says Soka. Siobhan says she's not going to call back. Alejandra says, boy, we're all spilling things this morning. She's going to jail, says Soka. Well, somebody says, call Miss Joy. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, Miss Joy ain't got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, someone says the annulment removes all previous marriages. So legally, an annulment removes your previous marriage, the difference between a divorce and annulment. But you can only, so let me understand something about marriages in the Philippines. Are you saying that you can get married in the Philippines, um, an annulment 20 years later, and it says that you've never been married? Uh, is that how it works? Because I thought an annulment, well, in our side of the world, you can only get an annulment under certain circumstances. Where's my Filipino people? Uh, hold on now. Hold on now. Where's my Bayan group? Uh, oh, gosh. I'm trying to remember my little friend's name now. Um, oh, Lord. What's his name again? Any Filipinos that can help me out here? So somebody says, yes, the annulment removes your previous status and you go back to being single. And so you can get an annulment at any time. But then how do you get a certificate that says after the marriage that you're still married? See that you got to look at the documentation. So the person who sent in the document says she's not annulled. You can't get those documents if she's no longer married. So you wouldn't be able to get that search document that said they're still a registered married. Rebel says, how many more Filipino marriages are like that in Cayman? There needs to be more scrutiny of these marriages of convenience. Wow. Mind you now, keep in mind that she's told the husband, which she says is now her ex-husband, that she was marrying just to be able to stay here. So he didn't seem to know anything about it. And when it was discovered, um, it was to quote unquote, dodge each other's mandatory rollover and visa approval purposes. Huh. Mm -mm. Siobhan says something fishy going on. I thought that they can't get a divorce over there. So now we know that there's an annulment. Magdalene's asking about the marriage officers, but again, that's not their job. Let's ask Miss Joy how this works. Because I think y'all need to know a bit more about how marriages work and what marriage officers are supposed to do and not do. Let's get it from the experts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, no answer. Anybody else who's a marriage officer? Um, oh, I know who became a marriage officer. Hold on. Uh Noel, he's a marriage officer. I was trying to think who else. 
Um, some of y'all are marriage officers, but I can't think who else. Let's give him a call. He might answer the phone. Another common sense scenario is that the ex-husband um, sees the lady making good money and uses the legal marriage to come after her, even though they're no longer together. Well, she has to get the nomad. That's true. But she has to go through the process. Anybody listening who's a marriage officer that can help me out here? I mean, that that doesn't, yeah, I mean, it's possible, although the husband actually doesn't even want to talk about it. So it's not him that has contacted us. It's somebody else who knows about the situation. Um, but at the end of the day, he could be salty. I mean, that's entirely possible. But um, more importantly, she's got to do whatever legal steps she has to take, right? So that doesn't negate her, her responsibility. Uh, yeah, tr we tried to call Miss Joy. She's unavailable. She might be marrying somebody this early in the morning. Who knows? And if she said she was married before, she would have to provide proof of divorce or annulment. And of course, the argument being is you can't get this document from the Philippines, um, if you actually have an annulment, you wouldn't be able to get this document. So Ms. Darlene says, to be honest, I don't think we should engage in this before we search to see what are the laws in the Philippines as their Catholic society and use other ways to separate. So we have established that the, uh, the only way that you can separate in the Philippines is through um, an annulment. But <laughs> the annulment can't exist and you get this piece of document that you see on the paper on the screen here. Uh -huh. uh, Van Gado says, yeah, I don't understand why big people would be going around acting so childish and making loud outbursts at the people damn yard and yet still walk, leave your money on the ground. Oh, talking about uh, Diane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Johan says, we don't care. She's not married to Caymanian. Um, Darlene, her ex-husband uh, isn't really... I guess he's still hurt over the whole situation. So he doesn't want to talk about it, but the documents were sent through. And um, the question is, why aren't the authorities in the Cayman Islands doing their job? Alton says a lot of them do it here in the Cayman Islands. Gabby says, yep, it says, despite efforts to introduce divorce legislation, the Philippines continues to maintain its stance against divorce. But once again, there can't be an annulment if you can get a search done and it shows up saying that she's still married. Ay, ay, ay. What a mess. Uh, let me just be very, very clear. The bigamy in the Cayman Islands is a criminal offense. And it is one in which you can go to jail for. And um, marriages of convenience are also illegal in this jurisdiction. Good morning, caller. Yes, Andy. Good morning. You know morning. that in the Philippines is one of the major places that you can get all kind of documents. It's it's they can produce any kind of document. You're thinking about our neighboring countries, but the Philippines is a highly with fake and um, you know documents. I've seen this over and over. So <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me that he could still or she whoever can still get that document. Just saying. All right. Well, we can call them. Okay. This can this can be very very easy um, to verify because we can certainly pick up a phone call. Now, it would it would be um, <laughs> quite a bit to trouble to go to to get this um, 
the search done, the person says, but she's already um, honored that she's married. So how's it fake? I mean, she's admitted that she is married. Hmm. Um, this person says, as the search records updated regularly, though, are they updating the records or is there lag? Well, even if we take it on the face of the date that's on this document, which is September of 2023, she got married in May. So even if there is a lag, um, how, how much of a lag are we talking about here? Because she got married in, in May. Um... Oh, yeah, it's 10 p.m. there. I was going to say we would call them, but it's 10 p.m. there. All right. We're, we're going we're gonna to contact them. We, we'll verify the documentation since some of y'all are questioning the documentation. I'm sure that we can... Um, we can verify that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, we will get to the bottom of that. All right. On the face of it. On the face of it, this looks very, very suspicious here. We have a verification, a request that says these people are still married. This person says, I'm a Filipino getting married as well. If you share the document, um, I can check it for you. Okay, no problem. That's what documents are for, child. These things are public registers. And there is a second document as well. Hold on one second. This one was a little bit hard to read, but there is a second document in here that is a... Um, Oh, yeah. So this is a certificate of marriage from, hold on. This one's a bit more detailed. Um, this one says certificate of marriage. Um, this, this looks like an original document. This, this don't look like nothing that's been doctored, to be honest. Um, documentary stamp, tax paid. You got your little seal right there. Certificate of marriage, provinces. Um, city, municipality, registration number, uh, name of consummating parties. Is that what it says? Hold on. So this is like a secondary page. Somebody says the QR scan at the bottom should give you um, additional confirmation and information. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they do. It's interesting that they have a QR scan. I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's see if it picks up anything. I mean, I don't know what it's scanned with. So it's, it's not a, a scan that you can, well, that one you're not using your phone on. Let me see. So it's got, it actually has two scans at the bottom, but I can't, because it's a photocopy of that QR scan. So um, Claire Dennis Napa, PhD, National Statistics and Civil Registry General, Philippine Statistics Authority, all, all kind of signatures on this one. Um, I mean, this one looks pretty legit. Got married January the 10th, 2011. At 5 p.m., this Filipino person says this looks very authentic. They're in the process of um, of getting married. She she should have a Cetomar saying that she's single. If none, then she's in trouble. It looks authentic. One way she can clear her name is if she, she can give you a Cinemar, which is a certificate of no marriage. If she can't show that, sorry, then she is still married. This is what our Filipino expert is saying. Expert, because she's getting married soon. Uh, block 7, lot 29. I mean, uh, yeah, this this looks like this is legit. Name who gave consent or advice. Looks like the mama gave consent. The mother gave her address. 
name of mother, um, name of fathers, civil status, Catholic, Christian. One is Catholic and one's Christian. What's the difference? Um, all right. So, so another pair of eyes saying this, this looks authentic. Hmm. Well, she said she's going to call us back and um, hopefully she can produce that uh, certificate that says that she is indeed um, a single woman. Soka says she already told the boss that she needs to go home because she's not feeling so good today. Miss Olive says, no, she married in a white dress. Didn't you see the marriage picture? Well, everybody gets married. Most people get married in a white dress. That don't mean nothing these days. Um, so Gabby says, but Sandy respectfully, Miss Joy should have done a background check. How? That's not what, that is not the obligation of, let me, let me say this, Gabby. We actually have, um, we actually have, what's it called? Um, immigration WRC that isn't doing background checks on people. And that's actually part of their job. It's not part of her job to do background checks. So I'm a little bit confused as to why she would be doing that. WRC isn't going to give any information on this. Call the husband, says Rebel. My son's wedding was an all-white wedding, but the bride wore a black two-piece rumpa gown. It was beautiful. Black? Mm, what a mess. <sighs> Popo driving through my neighborhood. All right, Siobhan, you should feel very safe right about now. All right. Uh, shall we take a bet? Is she going to call us back, you think? I'll keep y'all posted. Call Eddie Powell. Eddie, where is he? Sometimes he's on the morning show. Is Eddie here? Um, He's married now in the Philippines as well. But I don't think that Eddie's going to... I don't know how much information poor Eddie is going to be able to uh, provide to us. Okay. Uh, Leroy says it's um, Easter time for bun and cheese. Good morning, Noel. Good morning, Sandy. What's up? I just got a message saying you're trying to reach me. What's up? Yes. You're still a marriage officer? Yes. Okay. I have a general question for you. So when people get mm -hmm. married um, in the Cayman Islands, is it your legal responsibility under the law to... Um, verify their marital status, like if they're truly single, divorced, annulled, whatever? Uh, yes, we are. It's our responsibility to make sure if they were married before to get the divorce decree. And we also supposed to follow up immigration to see what the outcome of the person, whether they unroll over, how long they've been on island, any situation that would draw red flags. We are responsible for you know, pinpointing and then make a decision whether we want to marry the person or not. So how do you verify, because we have a situation right now where the allegation is that a Filipina lady is still married to her husband in the Philippines. So how would you verify that? You're just taking her word for it if she says that she's single? Or does she have to provide, like, what do you require in terms of documentation? Um, for overseas, I mean, it's pretty difficult to get any information from overseas. Pretty much you would have to go off of what the person tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, here it's easy to do checks and stuff. It's not an issue. But like if say the Filipino lady came and say she was never married in the Philippines, for me personally, I can't speak for anyone else. That I would question because a lot of times they say they're not married and they are married. So you would have to find a way of getting in contact with a registry office over there to see whether the name is on the registry of being married and if they've been divorced and that sort of stuff. But a lot of people don't do it. Mm -mm. So they're being dishonest about their marital status. Yes. And then when it comes out, of course, you can be charged, fined, and put in jail for bigamy. Yeah. Do you know offhand, I was going to just look this up. Do you know offhand what the offense of bigamy gets you in terms of like um, jail time and stuff? I have no idea, you know. 
Um, but also, son, I want to say this. It mm-hmm. also down to the person who is marrying the individual to make sure that they know who they're marrying. Yeah, well. Because if you're going to marry someone, you're supposed to know whether or not they've been married before. Obviously, they can lie to you mm-hmm. um, about it. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you have done everything you possibly can in mm-hmm. order to find out as much as you possibly can about the person that's getting married. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is where the problem lies. And this is where we have so many marital convenience and stuff here. And a lot of the foolishness that are going on because due diligence is not being done properly. And I think sometimes, too, that the other party um, probably doesn't care. I mean, she's married another Filipino guy. So maybe he knows that she has a husband and doesn't care. Probably. Probably. A lot, there's a lot of things going on here with marriages at the moment that people are scared to talk about or to touch on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really bad. And, you know, the system is there, but a lot of people doesn't utilize it either. Um, mm-hmm. Work sent took an email the other day saying that, you know, we no longer can message them for information that needed, mm-hmm. which there's a load of names on emails that are sent from the registry office whenever mm-hmm. they have updates or if a family member write in to inquire or to make a complaint why they feel their daughter or son shouldn't get married to the individual, mm-hmm. then we are also emailed on that, raising flags that if they do come to us, we have all rights then to, to dig into it to see exactly what the situation is before making that point. Mm-hmm. I have turned down over eight marriages. I refuse to marry people because I know. And the thing is, if you're not a streetwise person that be out there and know these people and know what's going on, mm-hmm. it's kind of difficult. Mm. Wow. Because plenty of times people come to me and ask me to marry them or somebody come and ask me if I if I would marry X, Y, Z. And I, I would just think of who the person is. And I know them. I said, no, I'm not going to do it because it's just whether or not the key factor is how long they've been together. They're mm-hmm. always arguing and fighting and police is always involved. So why would you want to marry someone like that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is no no structure anywhere. It's just, it's just a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not saying that any relationship doesn't have its ups and downs because they all do. Mm-hmm. But there's many things and counseling and stuff. Some people need to go to counseling before they're married mm-hmm. because it is needed. Right. So it's down to the officer that is marrying them. And I see more and more needs popping up on the list for marriage officers. Mm-hmm. So one can only hope that in fact, they're doing the right thing, just not for the 450 or $425. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I mean, this comes at a time when the government has said that they're trying to combat an increase um, in, you know, these fraudulent marriages? Well, according to the law, if you get, if you're found doing anything wrong with the marriages and stuff as an officer, you could be fined up to, I think it's $10,000 in in prison. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard anyone been charged or put in prison for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, it's, it's a situation where the officer has to do their jobs. You just, someone can't come to you today, which is Wednesday, and you marry them on Saturday. There's no way for you to do what you have to do in a couple of days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. So you're, you're saying that the, even the time of like putting up bands and all that kind of stuff, it just isn't enough time to be able to verify anything if you wanted to. Not if anything, bring up red flags in your mind. There isn't. Yeah. There isn't enough time. Mm-hmm. It's that, you know, like I said, it's down to the officer to decide, yes, okay, well, I think this is all okay. I've checked it, my checks. There's no red flags. Let's go ahead with this. But if there's anything in your mind that's going to raise a red flag, then I would say to the person, I'm sorry, but I still have to do checks. I'm not ready to do this yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But because there's and so many they officers, can, they can just go to no, another, they jump to the next. Yeah, they can just go to another marriage officer. Exactly. Wow. Uh-huh. And I think if you find any red flags and stuff, then you should... Send your, your findings into the registry office and lodge it there that if anyone else tried to get any information to call anyone or to try to marry the same person, that questions will be raised. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's very, very helpful information. You're welcome, man. All right, my dear. Uh, anytime. John says, okay. thanks, dear. John says, why yeah. is this subject consuming the show today? Because we have a lot of marriages of convenience, which has a huge impact on this community. I'm I'm surprised that, that a question like that is even needed. Just last week, John, you might have missed that show. We were talking about a guy who um got six and a half years imprisonment for threatening his ex because he wanted um 
at what really looks like a marriage of convenience to continue so that he could get the benefits of being able to stay in the Cayman Islands and basically threaten to kill her if she did not, um, you know, lie to immigration and tell them that they were in a bona fide relationship, a bona fide marriage, and allowed him to get his papers off of her. So this is very, very topical and very, very important discussion. Good morning, caller. Good morning. I say bodies, they say Honduras is. That's the way our marriage. And mm-hmm. listen to me carefully. Yes, they need to verify because when we went long to get married, right? <clears throat> My husband only had uh, a few days or whatever to, to um, stay long there because he had to come back to work. But we had to put up, they say, bonds for 15 days. We had to get two witnesses that had known me and him for at least five years, the least, to know that, well, and they had to verify that he was not married up here to nobody. Mm-hmm. They could verify me because I was born down there. So they could know that I wasn't married to nobody. But yes, it's because that's big trouble. You could go to jail for that. Mm-hmm. Then, well, he didn't have the time. And then they said, well, we had to send to the capital mm-hmm. and get a special license. That's why he keeps saying that he pay X, Y, and Z. I'm out of Lampira for me. And I said, damn, you know, pay that to me because I cost more than that. You, you pay that to that license so we could have married in order for him to come back up to his work. And then, well, I had more time. But yes, that's a serious, serious thing. Down there. Bad is they didn't call him third world country and say that, that he can do anything down there. But it, I don't know about now. Uh, this from 1980, mm-hmm. so we got married, but I know it, it, it wasn't too easy to, to get stuff done down there when we went to get married. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. Why? No, I mean, like I say, things can change, but that's how it was when I got married. The 26th of January 1980, we got married there. Mm-hmm. And that was in Banaka. That naive, in a way, we, we married in the Cabildo, they call it one of those Spaniard named Israel Maria. So I don't know, I don't know about these things. So yes, people will lie and people can say that they're mm-hmm. not married and whatever. That's the way I call it. And, and if you, if I won't get married to somebody. That's that why one old man that I used to be telling my husband, but um, you could get married again, you know, um, 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 the marriage in Honduras don't count. I say, yeah, you make him tell you that foolishness. Don't care where you're married. If you're married in Timbuktu, once you got a marriage certificate, it's valid. So you will get married. You, you know what bigamy is? Mm-hmm. You and Maria could go to jail. Mm. What a mess. Thank you, caller. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, so according to the penal code, a person who dishonestly or with fraudulent intent goes through the ceremony of marriage or civil partnership, knowing that that person is not thereby lawfully married, um, commits an offense and is liable for imprisonment for five years. Hmm. Okay, so five years imprisonment. Ogier, good morning, says just joining. Here in France, we require a certificate of no um, impediment. So in other words, there's no reason why you shouldn't, should not be able to get married. I don't think Miss Joy would marry them if she suspected any wrongdoing. Um, I'm sure she wouldn't. Uh, Karen says it's not the responsibility of the marriage officer to perform uh, background checks on couples who plot who plan to tie the knot. Officers will have to take the document given, which is given to them. The onus is on the couples to be truthful. And that is why, yes, absolutely. Um, in the law, it's very clear. Uh, Cece says, Debbie, honey chow, once she paid, you really think she cares? <laughs> um, I think that because it would be a breach of the law that she does care. Alejandro says marriage used to be religious, but now it's trending business. Uh, who would have ever known? Well, in fact, marriages started out as an arrangement that had nothing to do with religion at all. Um, Andrew says money is passed around. This has impact on our Cayman Islands in so many ways. This is a serious issue. I, I listen. I am. I am very. I'm always surprised when people say, "Oh, that that doesn't. We don't care about that issue. That doesn't matter because." The truth about it is um, every single issue like this and so many others uh, is most important 
And it's interesting to me that people don't see the trickle down effect that it has on their lives. And, and generally speaking, in this country, we've, we have changed immigration laws previously to curtail people from other jurisdictions being able to come here and do this exact thing. Marry when they had families and marriages overseas because they were seeking to get a particular benefit in this jurisdiction. Here's our soon-to-be Filipino bride. She says, came in. Government should at least ask for this since uh, there's plenty of Filipinos here. This is the Senamar. It's pretty easy to acquire. There's a major requirement in the Philippines because you guessed it right. Plenty of Filipinos want to marry expats. So I believe Cayman government slash married officers should consider asking for this before um, officiating a marriage. So what this is, this um, Senamar is basically able to say there's a certificate of no marriage. So let me show you what this looks like. Thank you so much to um, our, and they said that this is easy to get. While the annulment might not be easy to get, the cinema, which would prove your status, is very, very easy to get. So, um, and perhaps the powers that be today are listening to the program and can see the importance of obtaining this type of document before they marry people. So essentially what this says, I know sometimes it's hard to read because these documents come up a little bit small, but this says um, Office of the Civil Register, again, that same stamp is up there at the top, uh, Republic of the Philippines, Philippine Statistics Authority in Manila. Um, to whom it may concern, we certify that so-and-so who is alleged to have been born um, on then they give the date of birth in Makati City, Metro Manila to so and so. So they name the parents. Does not appear in our national indices of marriages. This certificate is based on the records of, and then they do the same thing, enrolled in the database as of February 28, 2018. So, um, and issued at the request of, you know, obviously the bride was requesting it for her passport travel. Mm hmm. So what I would say is um, this certi certificate, I'm told, is relatively easy to obtain. They get this for passports and other purposes. So maybe we need to now start to request this type of documentation if these fraudulent marriages are occurring. All right. Some people, they think the rule does not apply to them, says Everton. Um, does either one have status or PR? If not, who cares? Hmm. Wow, I didn't know that you guys didn't care when laws are broken in this country if they don't have status or PR. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 it's shocking to me how y'all just don't care about certain things. A breach of the law is a breach of the law regardless of who's breaching it. Her... Indication, allegedly, to the husband has been that it's an order for them to benefit in terms of the rollover and to be able to stay here. Why would you want people staying here who are blatantly disregarding the law, marrying just for that specific reason, lying about their marital state, status and so on? That's fraud on the government of the Cayman Islands. Just to be able to avoid rollover and stay here. Here's a funny thing. You're asking whether or not they have status or PR now. If they're able to, through this fraudulent marriage, avoid getting rollover and able to then obtain status or PR later on based on that fraud, what are your thoughts then about that? Does it become relevant and important to you then? Hmm. Justin says that joining from DC, we used to require blood tests in some states. Now it's just business to get married for uh, a financial benefit. What was the blood test for? I'm curious. What was that looking for? Um, Ralph C says, you got women out there who are getting married just to get divorced <laughs> so that they can take half of a man's stuff. Oh my gosh. What a hot mess. Garrett says, businesses were always 
Our marriages, sorry, were always a business arrangement. Long before religion, it is also used to take advantage of family ties and political gain. Yes. Um, that's how uh that's how kings and queens and you know back then that's how they used to do it. You're gonna marry this person because they're your cousin, yes, but it'll fortify, you know, our land holdings in this particular jurisdiction, or it'll make England marrying the French cousin makes us much more strong on the European front. There were all sorts of reasons, uh, quite frankly, um, all for business as to why you got married. Uh, Cece says, I personally feel that marriages should have an expiry date so people can think if it makes sense to or want to renew their vows every year. Lord Jesus, an expiry date. It's called just get a divorce. <laughs> Lord, an expiry date. Y'all are too much. Oh my gosh. Justin, <laughs> I can't with y'all. Oh, wow. Um, just as I said, I had so many cases of them falsely representing education and fake certificates. I've seen that um, as well, Miss Darlene. What a hot mess. From what I know, Miss Joy always meets with a couple beforehand and talks with them in order to decide. People need to stop lying and just be honest, but I won't hold my breath for that, says Haley. Good morning, Haley. Um, Michael says that any person displaying the symptoms of wanting to marry clearly are not of sound mind and should be deported immediately. <laughs> oh, Siobhan says exactly, regardless of whether they're from here or not, it's not okay for people to break our laws. Mm -mm. Fraud 100%. Uh, says Justin, oh, they were checking for family lineage with the blood tests. Oh, okay. And a lot of times they knew they were cousins and they didn't really care. <laughs> um, Gabby says, yep. And they're going to brag about how easy the system is and everyone come flocking to do the exact same thing. Yes. Not the first. And I doubt it'll be the last time. So listen, laws are in place for a reason and, uh, they have to be respected and you have to be a law abiding individual. And we, we should be trying to attract people who are not dishonest and lying about marriages. And, you know, the, she wasn't, you, you could kind of see, even with the brief conversation that we had with her, it was a bit of a shifting narrative. And so um, at the end of the day, if she's here fraudulently married, she should be arrested and charged like everybody else. We can't say, oh, we're only going to arrest and charge Jamaicans when they do it. And then when other people do it, they get a pass. That's not how the law works. Okay. All right, let's move on. First of all, let's give a, a big shout out um, to Car City. Now, this is very, very important. I need y'all to pay attention to this one. If you own a Honda and you're not aware of the, funny enough, same last name as this woman, Takata Airbag Recall, um, you need to be because you need to, they have more than ample airbags in stock. They've got staff who are there who are going to assist you in this. Um, you need to get your recall done, okay? So basically how this works, folks, is um, if you own a Honda between certain dates, there has been a compromise with the airbags. This is your life and safety that's on the line. Honda being the wonderful company that they are, are replacing these airbags free of charge to you, including um, free of charge, the, the repair is done, the airbag. All you need to do is book your appointment with Car City, show up on time, and they will do everything for you. We've actually seen them do the airbags. I mean, they're pretty quick because they've done thousands now, but there's a lot more to go. So a lot of you have, um, and it applies not just to people who purchase cars from Car City, but even if you have imported, you know, these Japanese imports, the recall applies to them as well. So folks, you've got to do your part. I'm a little back scratcher here. You've got to do your part and take in your vehicle because heaven forbid you get in an accident, this could make the difference between loss of life or not loss of life if your airbag um, malfunctions, okay? So here's a little word from them. Uh, please call them, uh, make your appointment and get this taken care of. 
Do you own a 1996 to 2016 Honda vehicle? There is an ongoing urgent safety recall regarding faulty Takata airbag inflators in Honda vehicles in the Cayman Islands. As affected vehicles get older, a combination of high temperatures and humidity can affect airbag inflators with the fault. If you're involved in a collision, the airbag can go off with too much explosive force causing sharp metal fragments to shoot out and kill or seriously injure people in the vehicle. To check whether your vehicle is affected, go to hondakman.com slash recalls. Honda will replace any defective airbag inflators completely free of charge. Contact the Car City service team to arrange this. Please take the time to check if your vehicle is affected by this urgent safety recall by going to hondakman.com slash recalls now. All right, folks. So again, you've got the dates there. Um, even if it's an importy, I would uh, seriously encourage you to, um, oh, wait a minute. That was not on radio. Huh? Hold on, honey chill. We're going to have to play. We're going to have to play that again. Hold on. Not on radio. Let me check my radio feed. Hold on. Do you own a 1996 to 2016 Honda vehicle? There is an ongoing urgent safety recall regarding faulty Takata airbag inflators in Honda vehicles in the Cayman Islands. As affected vehicles get older, a combination of high temperatures and humidity can affect airbag inflators with the fault. If you're involved in a collision, the airbag can go off with too much explosive force causing sharp metal fragments to shoot out and kill or seriously injure people in the vehicle. Vehicle. To check whether your vehicle is affected, go to hondakman.com slash recalls. Honda will replace any defective airbag inflators completely free of charge. Contact the Car City service team to arrange this. Please take the time to check if your vehicle is affected by this urgent safety recall by going to hondakman.com slash recalls now. Do you... Do you own a 1996 to 2016 Honda vehicle? There is an ongoing urgent safety recall regarding faulty Takata airbag inflators in Honda vehicles in the Cayman Islands. As affected vehicles get older, a combination of high temperatures and humidity can affect airbag inflators with the fault. If you're involved in a collision, the airbag can go off with too much explosive force causing sharp metal fragments to shoot out and kill or seriously injure people in the vehicle. To check whether your vehicle is affected, go to hondakman.com slash recalls. Honda will replace any defective airbag inflators completely free of charge. Contact the Car City service team to arrange this. Please take the time to check if your vehicle is affected by this urgent safety recall by going to hondakman.com slash recalls now. Taste of Cayman is back with a side of black eyed peas. Friday, April 12th, the food and drink festival on April 13th. Bundle tickets and save. Don't miss out on the culinary and chef demos. Delicious food and drink from over 25 vendors. Caymanian cultural performances. Live music, mixology, and more. Taste of Cayman is presented by Dart with the support of many valued sponsors. Buy your tickets at tasteofcayman.org. Taste of Cayman is back with a side of black eyed peas. Friday. Wanted to fix that radio issue. I think we're good now. All right. So some comments coming in on WhatsApp. This person says, shaking my head. We have some really stupid, expletive people. This is committed here, and they don't care. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Yeah, sorry to call back again, Sandy. But mm -hmm. you see, I know people may not um, like me for saying this, but we as a society is focused so much on other nationalities like the Jamaicans, the Honduran, the Spanish, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you this, for what experience I've had, Filipino has the best access between Filipino and Canadians. 
they have the best accent. I mean, um, I, what is it? I'm just saying not, not accent. Um, <laughs> I can't get the word out now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's uh, uh, accessible that they can get anything on a paper. Anything they want, they can get on a paper. And then we ask them why they they're doing this. It's because of economic um, opportunities in Cayman. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, they're gonna. They don't want to go back home now until yes, Filipinos will go back home when they have, when they have accomplished everything that they have set out to be to do. But we have to be scrutinizing more people. Well, every, we everybody, the, the rules apply to everybody. I mean, you it, don't you don't get does, an exception but, but, but because of where you where let's you're from. Face it, let's face it. We are very prejudiced towards certain nationalities that's what i want to say mm -hmm. certain people can get it but this has been going on for a long time long time this has been going on because mm -hmm. they are very accommodating people and they're very passive and stuff but be careful be careful with them i learned that just just my last no more calls for today <laughs> okay caller thank you so much yeah, I mean, everyone, um, you know, this is why on this program in particular, on this platform, we don't really care who you who you is. We don't care who your mama is or any of that stuff. Everyone has to, um, you know, adhere to the same set of rules. You know, we don't care if you got money, if you don't have money, it doesn't really matter. So from that perspective, um, everyone, it, it's the same rules for all people. All right, here's this quote, um, Daily Quote says, people don't defend what is right anymore. They defend who they like. And we see this all the time in the world of politics, for example, which is uh, really quite unfortunate. But it doesn't just stop in the world of politics. It runs the gamut. So people, did, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you like you like some people. Oh, yeah, they're good workers. It's not the next thing. Um, that is a reason for you to defend all sorts of foolishness. No. We have laws in this country and the laws apply to everyone and everyone has to adhere to the laws. It's as simple as that. I don't care who you are. I don't care who, whether you're Filipino, Jamaican, Canadian, whatever. Um, I do agree with the caller. And I, I have seen it on more than one occasion where people respond differently depending on who it is and where they're from. All the time I've seen it. Um, even sometimes in the comment section. So let's talk a little bit about our own people now. Lawbreakers. And they break laws and, you know, once again, we, we feel a particular way about our own people uh, giving them a pass. Well, you know, Sandy, she had a rough life. Oh, okay. And your point is, the real question is, how many of us have not had a rough life? Oh, but Sandy, if you knew how she grew, yes. I'm sympathetic up to a point. My sympathy stops when people continue to make really, really poor decisions in their life. And then they want to blame everybody else. It's everybody else's problem when she can't get it together. Wonk, wonk, wonk. That ain't got nothing to do with me now that as an adult, you continue to make poor children, poor, poor children, poor choices. And the sad thing is there are children actually who are involved in this. So the next generation is now at a disadvantage. This, this, this is where the sad element of it, you know, it, it, it does break my heart. But what people need is a dose of reality. They don't need you to be hand holding them and trying to give them an excuse for continued bad behavior. I feel sorry for, for the children. I feel sorry for the people whose homes she's now burglarizing and stealing stuff from, multiple condos. Um, just yesterday, a lady reached out saying that her uh, jewelry was stolen. She better go check this woman. Um, you know, they went out on the beach, and next thing you know, they come back and the ring's gone. One looks like her wedding band. And she's like, please, can somebody do the right thing and, you know, return return my wedding band? You know, these things have uh, lots of, um, you know, memories and so forth attached to it. And I thought, wow, this is so sad. 
And it's sad when people are doing all the wrong things and we are prepared to give them all sorts of excuses. My goodness, how incredibly sad is this? So this young lady was in the news last week for multiple offenses. And I was looking at her going, why does she look so familiar? Hmm? Why does she look so familiar? Well, she looks familiar because we had actually posted her on CMR previously for smoking pot. Somebody sent a video of her smoking pot with a baby in her hand. Now, listen, you guys know, babies and young children, teenagers, poor things, don't have the immune system and the resilience that adults do. Let me be very clear. Smoking will eventually kill you. That's not up for debate. But when you expose young children to it, I can't think of anything worse. Remember back in the day when people used to, um, they used to smoke with the windows open in a car? Oh, my God. Then you guys began to understand how incredibly dangerous second and even third hand smoke is. Children have allergies, they have asthma, they develop lung cancers, all sorts of cancers. And it's like, you can't be doing this. Hmm. So I couldn't find the video because it's it's been a couple of years now, but she was featured before. Like I said, smoking pot with the baby. Um, you know, she got really upset that she was featured and all up in her feelings about it. I'm like, honey, child, just stop smoking pot with your, your child in your hand. But, you know, come on now. Like, really? <sighs> anyway, here she is again in the news. Now being called out for burglarizing condos and stealing from people. Hmm. Well, anybody has the video? I was trying to see if I could find it, but I uh, it's been a couple of years now. It's only God knows. Um, so her husband steps up to the plate. Another marriage of convenience from what I understand. And um, he wants to jump in on the conversation. And this is what he had to say. One long post for him. He got time on his hands when he should be trying to find a job. To support his family, he's instead writing a book of a response. He, he says to me, you don't get, you didn't get the clout you were looking for yesterday. So you come back again today. Okay. I'm glad he thinks that I need clout. Honestly, I don't really give a expletive about the clout you're looking. It's W-Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. But anyway, carry on. I care less about what you're looking for. With this said, let me say this. Nathania is my wife, and she's a good girl. Huh, right. Who tried hard to do good for herself and her kids, but thanks to people like you, Sandra, yes, expletive you, who would put her down at every chance you get. Nobody knows what she went through, T-R-U, for the past eight years since she, I met her. And she did really good to not go back right after she came out. She even asked you for help on numerous occasions for getting a job and also at times to find places for rent for her. You don't post them stuff, but as soon as negative narrative comes about, you jump like the expletive bullfrog you are. Quite frankly, I don't give an expletive for what you have to say or looking for. Well, obviously you do care, sir. This book, this novel that you've just written indicates you care. And I'm waiting patiently. Yes, you, I'm waiting. I'm standing behind my wife 100%. Let me pause there. What you should do is stand behind her 100% by getting a job. We come into you in a second, son. Hold on. Somebody tag Sandra. I'm not seeking sympathy. Can't spell sympathy right either. 
from no one or even expletive validation from expletive you. She's my wife, so part to start the humiliation, start the humiliation because it's not going to affect her anymore. Yeah, because she's going to jail. Uh, for the first time in her life, she knows she has somebody who won't bring her down and let her feel like she's less than a human. Hope you find what you're looking for, Sandra. You can't break her no more than what you did and your colleagues already did. Wow. Okay, sonny boy. What is, what is this fool's name? Anybody has a proper name for him? All right, so he claims that he was her savior coming in, her knight in shining armor on a white horse all the way from Jamrock, and he's here to save her. Marriage of convenience. Honey child, her life is no better than it. I mean, I don't know all the personal details, but she's now going to be headed to jail here shortly. Um, is her life any better when she met you eight years ago? I understand that you don't even want work that you up and quit good jobs because you are lazy and do not want to work. And all y'all want to live off the Cayman Islands government and EU system. It's not 1030. So I need to be careful that I don't use any expletives, but it looks like you really have no sense whatsoever. You can marry her and she can marry you for all the wrong reasons, apparently. But at the end of the day, do yourself a favor. Don't be talking about anybody's putting your wife down and this and that. What are you doing for your wife is the better question. Because my sources have said that the police need to be investigating you as the getaway driver for these robberies. Wonk, wonk, wonk. I'm just saying. What's the cold hard truth here, son? Hmm? Let me read some messages that I've received about you. Because it seems like if you had any sense, you would stay off of people's radar and keep your mouth shut. It is not my job. I, I do my part as much as I can. And by the way, I went back through my messages looking for when she would have messaged me asking about a job or a place to stay. And you know what she messaged me about back in 2022? Outing somebody else, talking about, oh, look, this other person smoking pot. Why didn't you post them up? I saw no message. And the last two plus years from her about anything about a place to stay or any jobs. Where did she send it exactly? Because obviously she had my WhatsApp number to be able to send me messages about other people smoking pot. So I'm just saying. Now, as much as I try to help people, y'all have got to help yourself. This is a lack of accountability, resilience, and everything else. Who's going to hire her? Based on what criteria exactly? So that she cannot show up to work? Gotten too comfortable uh, living off of NAU? Sitting out in a video smoking pot with a baby? That sounds like employee of the month. Who exactly is going to be interested in hiring people like this? You all have to do your part. Okay? Let me be very, very clear here. No one can save you when you are hell-bent on destroying your own life. Finding her place to stay? Remember where she was staying the last time I saw her? Sitting around, lounging around all day, smoking pot, and had to get evicted from that place? Who's going to give her a place to stay? So somebody said that they need to start telling the truth and investigate these robberies a little bit more to ask about who else is involved because it ain't just her, these burglaries. She doesn't drive. Other people around her driving. So who is uh, supplying the getaway car? Another person said, hold on, Sandy? Don't pay these people no mind, honey chill. Do not waste time with losers who've been provided with countless opportunities to work, but prefer to steal and have babies at the expense of NAU. Zero from zero, leave zero. They go on to say that Judith Douglas, remember her, the um, first uh, immigration work permit thief, fraudster, then just gone to jail again, for defrauding people from apartment rentals and whatever. 
this Judith Douglas, this person says Judith Douglas, AKA Molly has nothing over her. Check prison records. She will never change and her husband is wantless because he does not work. And you need to stop supporting her and others who have been repeated offenders. Something needs to be done um, in that place that if you reoffend, then you should stop getting benefits. And she is a kleptomaniac. Hmm. This is what people on the streets are saying, honey jail. I'm just, I'm giving it to y'all like how I'm getting it. But these are people who, for the record, are in the know. Yes. They have worked uh, with and around these individuals for a very long time. They say, check her record. It's quite long, only 35 years old. Well, she potentially has a very long life ahead of her. And so this is no way to do it, Nathania. Yeah? Come on, girl. Help yourself and get your life together. I'm just saying. Mm-mm-mm. It's very, very sad. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say, but people certainly expect um, other people to save them. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Sandra. Yes, I'm at your compo. Which one I can I work on first? Um, I'll open. Go, go to the door. Um, but by a, and I'll open the door for you. I'm on. Remember, I'm live Pardon until ten thirty. Remember, I'm on the radio till ten thirty. Go to a. I'll open the door. Okay. All right. Oh. Ay, ay, ay. Um, so, yes, people say must check out her record. Uh, she's got a very long and lengthy record. And so, um, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what she expects people to be able to do. You got to help yourself, girl. No one is going to be here to save you. Yeah? This lifestyle of picking up these no good men, uh, making them come to this country. He, he has time to be writing a book and defending you. Um, Raymond says that door needs some WD-40. He has time to be um, trying to defend you on social media. What he needs to do is man up and actually um, do his part by getting a job and supporting his family, right? Talking about, oh, you're a good woman. Okay, great. Help her get a job. That's your job. That should be your job first, not anybody else. You keep your job and work and support these families. How you got the woman living in a car and you talking about life is so good. She better off than where she was uh, eight years ago. Y'all must be crazy. Somebody says, if I remember correctly, this young lady has been in trouble since she was on her mother's breast. <laughs> Maybe he's the mastermind behind it all. Lisa Shalette's daughter. Rachel is what I think it is. Um, she goes by another name, if I'm correct. Well, I don't know who Lisa Shalette is. But what I can tell you is um, this woman and her husband who want to blame everybody else for their problems need to get it together. Okay? That's your best bet. Hmm. Huh? Hot mess. Uh, funny, says this person, how they need any you money for rent and food, but always have money for liquor, cigarettes, and weed. Wonk, wonk, wonk. They can find it. Hmm? Mm-mm. Get your life together, please. You know, we try to, um, uh, we try to help people, but the, the, the one thing about helping people is that they have to be prepared to help themselves. That, that's how that works. And you know, it's an amazing thing. I've experienced it myself. When people see you hustling and out there doing your part, 
They want to help you. They are motivated by your motivation. Isn't that something? Yes, we've all struggled. But man, people are just like, wow. You see the drive that this girl has no matter what? She's not out there stealing from nobody. She's not breaking no laws. She's not doing no foolishness that's going to get her mixed up in nothing. She's not marrying no man trying to use her. Marriages of convenience trying to con the system. I'm shocked that y'all actually have babies for these men. Ugh. They can't help themselves, much less help you. And then you can add children to the mix. And poor children. Uh, Siobhan says they still exist, knights in shining armor. Um, darn it, after show, and I'm not going to be here. No, we're not going into the after show today because I got I got a K-Man Voices interview to go conduct. Uh, this person says, go work. Uh, Leroy says, go work if you want a job. The work being W-O-R-C, they will give you help uh, so many times. Good morning, caller. Uh, good morning, Miss Sandy. How are you? Good not morning. too bad. How are you? I am good, thank you. Good. I'm just inquiring. Um, when a person has lost two, pup, two puppies and she wants to put an advert out, how does she go about doing that? Okay, if she can just send a WhatsApp message, that's probably the best way. She can message this number. Just send the photos and details of the puppies and we'll post it up. Right. Thank you so much. Not a problem, my dear. You're welcome. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. So, oops. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the program. Yeah, Miss Sandy. Yes, Good sir. Morning. I know you put what you put up on, uh, on over the weekend about that woman. Uh-huh. I one job. And I lose that job, I go to look again. So mm-hmm. I don't understand what is wrong with this woman and this man because they're young, they're able bodied people. 35 years old, I'm 42 on Friday. Mm-hmm. And I still feel like I, I, I'll go back in construction, anything I want. I, it's all about the money. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yep. I never depend on no no NAU, no no politician. Mm-hmm. If I want to drink, if I want my ganja, nobody no business with me, man. I buy my own things, I work my own money. You understand? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. No, listen, I mean the system the system is there. And um you know, at the end of the day, it, it can be useful and it can help people, but people must not abuse the system. And also, you know, they have to recognize that they have to be prepared to help themselves. These sorts of things are short term. You're not meant to live on NAU your entire life. Right. This, is, this is where I don't, I don't get it with these people. They become NAU clients and they never get off of NAU. And I don't want to be on no government assistance from nobody. You understand? Mm-hmm. If, I make, if I make it on my own. Thank you, caller. I appreciate it. They are in a demo, Sandy. People are young and Mm able-bodied. They can go and work. I I agree. I agree. And hard work. And listen, hard work. Not kill nobody yet. Before before I could even work in the seventh grade, I was selling candy bars to my fellow students hustling for a few dollars. I was going with my uncle to pick up cans and recycle. Hard work. Not kill nobody yet. Get up and get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. I appreciate it. All right. He said his birthday Friday. So we have to get him some brownies. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, what what is with our people? You know, we, we are people so soft in this day and age? Oh, no. We, oh, God. Heaven forbid you break a nail working. Mm -mm. I just don't get it. You know, there's a level of resilience that our people have lost. Our forefathers had it. They were going out to sea. They were working hard. They were doing the most. And somehow we've managed to um, have generations now of people who breeze blow and date on social media complaining. 
How about, oh, she reached out to you for a job. Did she go to WORC, whose, whose remit it is to get her a job? Did she go to them, register online like she's supposed to, apply for jobs, show up on time to job interviews, dressed appropriately, and not smoking and acting the fool and so forth? Did she do her part? Messaging me is not what you're supposed to be doing. If I can help, I help. But you do know that there's a process to get a job in Cayman. You register with WRC. Ask yourself that those types of questions. Don't be trying to put guilt me into feeling like, come on, it don't work. You wasted your time writing that dribble of a novel. You have so much to write. Compass is hiring. Why don't you go over there and try and get a job? Because you look like you like to write, son. I'm just saying. Maybe Radio Cayman could use your skills because you got plenty to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to stand by her. That's good. But what does standing by her actually mean? Staff, um, Rough C says people don't care if you smoke pot anymore, employers. Well, go explain to her why she's not getting a job. Um, Steph says, man, them come here, just pick up anything, all for the sake of paper, shaking my head, woman, them too. Uh, Simone says, if any, you stop assisting her, what about the children? How will the children eat? Uh, what I suggest they do is take the children. Now, I, I know y'all don't like to hear this kind of stuff, but allowing children to grow up in these sorts of dysfunctional environments with parents who are <laughs> drug addicts and fighting and fussing and carrying on the most isn't really a very good environment for children. You're dooming them to a life cycle of that hot mess. The children still sleeping and homeless in cars, even though she's on NAU. So is this really benefiting the children? Sometimes you have to remove children from the environment. Now, having said that, I need some of you all to step up to the plate and do your part. The government needs foster parents, right? I, I myself, I tell you the truth, if Cayman wasn't so incredibly small, I would become a foster parent, but I don't want y'all be coming knocking on my door talking about no foolishness under no circumstances. No, 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 honey child. You don't come talking about, well, Miss Sandy, you got one child driving in the bends. I got five more for you. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, I would, I would love to, I would love to be able to help a poor little child. Um, not too young though. I don't want any babies. I'm not into diapers anymore. Good morning, um, Alejandro. But anybody out there who can foster um, children, Sunday. please dig deep in your heart. Yes, sir. Yeah, that would be very helpful for you, though, Sandy. If they can have some really good, responsible adults out there. Like, yeah, I mean, you have to be able to stuff. offer them a good, stable home. Yeah. Um, you know, my, big, I, my I biggest concern, that, you know. to be honest, is because I already have a daughter, I don't want to introduce any sort of dysfunctionality into my home. And sometimes young children really have a lot of issues. And so they need someone yeah, who can yeah. focus will, just on them. In, yeah, I was once in a foster home, so I know how that is. That's not really, that not really the most easiest thing to adopt, adopt to immediately. Mm -hmm. so, um, but we need, you know, we need in, good in a, people a, a, who are willing to do it. Exactly. But, you know, Sandy, again, with this with this um, marijuana thing and employment and all those type of stuff. Right. You know, you do have you do have people that are on this medical marijuana, but it's not even the use of marijuana is the problem. You know, they look at you and they start judging you in the workforce, in the work environment. You got your um, employees or I mean, other employees or you got your manager, whatever it is that you that looking over you, your supervisor. And then. They got the audacity to come to tell you that they want to do a drug test because you know you look high at work, and then well, you're on the you're you're on a prescription or something like this. What yeah. is, what the difference is? You know, like I I want to know I want to know why why the why they use the marijuana card because it's nothing about even cocaine. Yo, look here, tomorrow I could use cocaine and it, and I can pass a drug test day after. I telling you how how these things this. These things, they have certain drugs that people use on a daily, and nobody knows about these things. Sandy, it, it, it's disgusting how 
people use the marijuana card because if you use marijuana one All time right. in your uh, life, um, Alejandro, weeks, we got five, we got five weeks, minutes left in the program, you. and it's not going to be right, on marijuana. Yeah, well, we, no, we, I, I we, we know your I position, but you. but having said yeah, that, we, right, there are certain jobs. There are certain jobs that you can't do uh, being in any sort of a substance right. whatsoever. So alcohol, right. you know, in any yeah, kind but, of. But but just by looking at somebody, you can't just say that they look high. You know, like when you when you do those things, they play the marijuana card on top of you, Sunday. Well, if you're not high, what's because the problem? That, but, well, I mean, somebody can tell no, me that I look high. I don't have a problem taking a drug test. If you're not high and then they're going to go and give you a drug test, either way you put it, it's going to not pass if you use even marijuana one time for the week. What do you mean one time for the week? Well, yeah, I mean, that I mean, means you're using unfair. it? It's unfair. It's unfair. There's people out there that are that are doing drugs that affect them on a daily, well, every single day. Well, they Ruff, get sees, it Ruff it. Sees says that there are people who will hire you who don't care if you're doing marijuana, so you need to get that job list yeah. from him to see who those people are. Yeah, you, you All right, know, Alejandro, they, they four minutes left, and it's not going to gonna be in marijuana. Oh, come on, you're listening to me. All, All right. Trust me, boy. All right, we got you, we got you. Um, we're not going to use the last four minutes on that marijuana discussion, though. The, the, these are the consequences of your actions. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. If you want to do marijuana, you have to understand that there's some people who would not employ you. I, I, I got friends who own companies. They People have to drive trucks, make quick decisions, whatever. They can't hire anybody who does any kind of drug. Whether it's marijuana, alcohol, a cocaine, whatever your drug of choice is, uh, they can't hire you. There'll be people who are not going to hire you even if you vape because they don't want you vaping in their office. Right? Smokers. Yes, there are people who are not going to hire you if you're a smoker because every two minutes you're running outside to take a cigarette break. Choices, consequences. You make the choice of what you want to do and then there are the consequences to go along with it. Good news. Here you know. Oh, we're missing some little puppies. We're going to post them up. Oh, they're so cute. My little tweetum. This person sends me a thing, says, please make it stop. <laughs> um, You say that hard work kill enough people. Too much stress is unhealthy and can kill, but we won't have the luxury of being able to choose to stop. Work going to have to kill us. Any updates on the man with the gunshot wound to the head? Yes. Um, it looks like he's alive. He's a Jamaican national. I have his name, but I won't put out the name at this stage. Um, so it looks like our story was spot on. So honey, chow. Popo hasn't said anything as yet. Good news corner. Good news corner. Look at this, honey, chow. Y'all ready? Drum roll, please. Drum roll. All right, look at this, look at this, look at this. Hold on, where did I put him now? Oh my gosh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what we got going on here this morning. Clifton Hunter. Looks like the Department of Education Services have been listening to the show. Bless their little heart. This person said, morning, Sandra. Good morning, honey, Jim. Just wanted to share the power of CMR. All of the carpets at Clifton Hunter are being ripped out as we speak. Woo! Whoop, 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 whoop. Thank you, good Lord, for your mercies. Look at this, children. Finally, finally, look at all that nasty, moldy, disgusting, dirty carpet being pulled out and y'all are going to finally get some tile after years and years of dirty carpets people having to be sent home they can't work or study in the conditions because their sinuses are inflamed they got asthma they got this they got that because of them nasty carpets of clifton hunter finally we rode them like the good old proverbial donkey off into the sunset and look like we have reaped some, some results. Praise the Lord. Can we get a hallelujah up in here? Praise the Lord. Now this is worth celebrating. Really and truly. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Pretty good news if you ask me, honey chill. We like to see results around here. Yep. 
Here's a positive note that we're going to end the show on today. It says, one of the hardest lessons in life is letting go. Whether it's guilt, anger, love, loss, or betrayal. Change is never easy. Easy. Mm-hmm. We fight to hold on and we fight to let go. Yes, sir. In the words of Anna and Elsa, just let it go. Let it go. All right. So on the, on the young man there, somebody said, was told that he only got a, a graze. But he's in all kind of mix up. Mm-mm. Lord have mercy. Ay, ay, ay. Y'all have a beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here in the cold heart. Drew, try to be good in the meantime. Miss Norma, I can't see a word you're saying, but anyway, um, your name coming up, but I can't see. You must be using emojis. Miss Loretta says, Amen. Hallelujah. Eh, praises. Uh, one quick note look at me. I went to the beach on Sunday. And look at the tan line. OMG. What a hot mess. That's what happens when you don't go out in the sun enough. Yes, sir. Be good, folks. We'll see you on Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday already. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Cold Hard Truth on Bobo 89.1 FM. Cayman's number one talk show is live weekdays from 7.30 a.m. Never miss an episode again. Watch anytime on CMR's Facebook and YouTube channels for the latest show episodes. Don't forget to follow us online on our social media channels and visit CaymanMarlRoad.com for all the latest news and community happenings. 